Section 1 and Elisha Pastushanam Rabbi Shimon opens by talking about Habakkuk but then discusses the entire story recounted in two Melashim about Elisha and the Shani Neat woman who had fed him bread when he passed by and prepared for him a small upper chamber with walls of bed and table and chair and a lamp. We are told that on the day Elisha came to the Shani Neat and promised her that she would bear a son, it was Rosh Hashanah when the barren women of the world were remembered. We are told that one must not be alone on the day of judgment because one might be noticed on his own and more subject to judgment and the mercies of God are always present over the whole people together. Rabbi Shimon says that when Elisha asked the woman if she would be spoken for to the king, he was offering to beseech the supernal king on her behalf, but she did not want to separate from her people. We hear that the reason the child born to her later died was because he was from the female side. Since he was given to her and not her husband Elisha was not told by the Holy One blessed be he that the boy would die so that he would not try to save him through prayer his servant Gehazi was not worthy of the miracle being performed through him so the Shani Neat woman insisted that Elisha come with her when Elisha lay upon the boy to bring him back to life he reconnected him to a different high place the place where life is found Rabbi Shimon returns now to Habakkuk with whom this passage began and says that Shabakuk means to embraces one from his mother and one from Elisha one from the female area and one from the male he tells us that there were various types of praises available to the prophets to cause the spirit of prophecy to dwell upon them and that all prophets need pleasantness in order to draw that spirit upon themselves only for Moses was this unnecessary Rabbi Shimon ends by saying that the children of Israel only tasted death when they departed from Egypt but that God healed them one and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that Elohim led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines. Shemot 1317 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying a prayer of the prophet Habakkuk upon errors. Shabakkuk 31. This passage is difficult and should be investigated what is the reason for writing a prayer of the prophet Habakkuk rather than any other prophet of the world for by them it is not written a prayer of Yeshua the prophet or of Yirmeya or Ezekiel or Hosea or the other prophets of the world. Do he responds we have learned that Elisha merited in the world what no other prophet did except for Moses come and behold it is written and it fell on a day and Elisha passed to Shinnam where there was a great woman. To Melashim 48 what is meant by great woman it is that she was great in her actions and the entire household was proud of her she was the mistress of the house and since her husband was not present in it. House to be the master she was mentioned instead of him three where there was a great woman another explanation is that she was greater than all the other women in the world because the other women were vexed and distressed when they saw a guest in the house and they would not spend money on him but she rejoiced with the guest and spent money on him when she saw Elisha she was moreover very happy with him all the praise goes to the woman because the guest of the house is a woman's therefore it is written where there was a great woman for she was greater than all other women for and she said to her husband behold now I know that this is a holy man of Elohim but not he asked how did she know that he was a holy man he responds the friends explained that she would spread a white sheet on his bed and never saw an emission of semen on it also a fly never passed on his table five he asks these words are difficult you say that she never saw an accidental emission from him but there are many people in the world who are so and have no accidental emissions. What is the difference here if you say that a fly never passed over his table? Why is it written? Behold, now I know. Did only she and no one else know? Yet all those who saw him eat at his table knew just like her six. He responds, but rather she spoke well. Behold, now I know. Only she knew because she arranged his bed when he lay down in it at night, and when he arose in the morning, it was so that she spread a white sheet in his bed. And by this did she know for the way of the world is that when a person arises from his bed, the sheet on which he slept exudes a foul odor. But when she removed the sheet from his bed, it exuded scents like those in the Garden of Eden. She said, if it were not for the fact that he is holy and the holiness of his master is upon him, a holy scent would not arise from the sheet. Seven. As a result, he had to separate from the house because a person cannot be so careful inside the house but she said let us make a small upper chamber I pray you with walls and let us set for him there a bed and table and a chair and a lamp of it and he inquires why these four he responds because they restore the congregation of Israel which is Malchut that is called an upper chamber with walls and so is it called for it is written and Shizkiah who turned his face towards the wall Yeshayah 382 ate a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp he asks the order of the passage is not the order of the usage because first a chair is needed and afterwards a table and afterwards a lamp and then a bed so why did she start with the bed he responds because she liked the bed better than everything and the person places that which he likes first for she noticed in the bed a higher degree of holiness above everything nine and it happened one day that he came there to Melashim 411 he asks and it happened one day what day was it he responds it is as we explained come and behold that Day was the holy day of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, when the barren women of the world and the inhabitants of the world were remembered. He called the Shani and said, Behold, you have been careful to take all this trouble for us. Sibid 13, therefore I must study the judgments of the world today, because today the Holy One, blessed be he judges the world, and because I separated myself to be alone in this place in the upper chamber with walls which was prepared for me, I must search the sentences of the world, meaning that whoever separates to be alone on the day of judgment is snared first, though he may be guiltless. Ten, he asks, What is to be done for you? Would you be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host of it? Is this important to a woman who never goes out or goes to the king's palace? But this day caused all the inhabitants of the world to await judgment, and on that day the Holy One, blessed be he shall be proclaimed as king, the king of judgment, he said to her, if you need the supernal king to forgive you for your actions, I will speak and beseech on your behalf. Eleven, and she answered, I dwell among my people. He asks, What does she mean? And he responds, At the time when judgment prevails over the world, a person should not separate himself from the general community and be apart, and he will not be singled out above and will not be noticed on his own. For at the time when judgment prevails over the world, those who were distinctly known and recorded apart are caught first, even though they may be righteous. Therefore, a person should never separate to be apart from the people, for the mercies of the Holy One, blessed be he, are always present over the whole people together. Therefore, she said, I dwell among my people, and I do not want to be separate from them as I have done until this day. Twelve, and because he answered, Verily, she has no child. Two Melashim 414, Elisha said to her, Certainly the time is favorable for you to redeem. Yourself with a son because the day induces it for on Rosh Hashanah barren women are remembered and he said about this time in the coming year you shall embrace a son and a woman conceived and bore a son in the season of which Elisha had spoken to her of it 16 to 17 assuredly at that time and afterwards he died he inquires what is the reason that he died he responds because the child was given to her and not to her husband and he was bound to the female place death awaits one who is bound to the female once do we know that he was given to her because it is written and you shall embrace a son 13 come and behold by Abraham it is written I will certainly return to you at the season bear sheet 1810 and not to her he will be bound to you indeed and not with a female for death is premature for one who comes from the female side and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of Elohim because she saw their holiness that was higher than that of everyone 14 and say to her is it well with you is it well with your husband is it well with the child to Melashim 426 from here we know that she is the mainstay of the house for he inquired first about her well-being and then her husband's well-being she went behind the prophet but before her husband and because he came near to thrust her away this has already been explained 15 but the man of Elohim said let her alone he inquires why is it that here the verse calls him the man of Elohim yet he was referred to as Elisha when he was in the city he responds here he was assuredly the man of Elohim because here is his place and not in the city not at the time when the sons of the prophets were before him thus there he was not called the man of Elohim but rather Elisha 16 and Hashem has hid it from me is written and Hashem reigned upon sdom anymore of Beersheet 1924 whereby and Hashem means he and his court of justice and this is the court of law below meaning Baljud. And has not told me to Melashim 427 he asks why did Elisha not know he responds the holy one blessed be he said how can I kill this one if I tell him he will not let him die because it is his present he will pray for him and not permit him to die but he must die as we learned
place and return to him his soul if he had not done so he would never have returned to life and the child sneezed seven times and not more than seven which corresponds to the seventy years of his life as is written the days of our years are seventy Tehillim 9020 this is Habakkuk the prophet as it says you shall embrace head Chokeda son Habakkuk is derived from embrace he asks if so he should have been called Chabak embrace why was he called Habakkuk which means to embraces he responds one embrace is of his mother and one embrace is of Elisha who embraced him when he revived him another explanation he received two embraces one from his mother's side and one from the prophet's side one embrace from the place from which he came originally meaning from the female place as mentioned and another embrace that raised him to the higher levels meaning to the place of the male as mentioned both these embraces are included in his mother's embrace and also in the Prophet's embrace he was therefore called Habakkuk which means two embraces 21 a prayer had tefila of the Prophet Habakkuk Shabakkuk 31 he asks what is the prayer that is mentioned here he responds this is the place to which he was originally connected from his mother's aspect and this is the hand tefila phylactery meaning the mukba of Zeir and that is called tefila upon errors if it means that on the day he became bound to it the errors of the world were suspended before the holy. One blessed be he which was Rosh Hashanah as mentioned and Bureau which is mukba dominated this tefila which is the mukba was therefore bound to him 22 another explanation for a prayer of the Prophet Habakkuk is that a prayer of Habakkuk means for Habakkuk for the two embraces which the Prophet gave him Hashem I heard the report of you and I was afraid of it to come and behold when the spirit of the Prophet was awakened over him that is the male when he embraces over this place over. The spirit of the female which is Tifa prayer which he had from the embrace of his mother, he approached with fear and trembling lest the judgments of the Mukba should not revisit him therefore he said Hashem I heard the report of you and I was afraid this they said is like the proverb one who is bitten by a dog trembles from his bark 23 Hashem revive your work in the midst of the years if it he asks what is your work and he replies he said it about himself that he is his work revive your work in the midst of the years means give him life to serve you among the supernal years which are the Sfirat another explanation revive him so that he shall not die again 24 on errors have Shikyonat he inquires what is Shikyonat it should have said Shikyonat as is written who can discern errors have Shikyonat Tehillim 1913 but Shikyonat is defined as is written Shikyon musical instrument to David Tehillim 71 that is a lyric used for praise for there were various Types of praises available to the prophets to cause the spirit of prophecy to dwell upon them as it is written that you shall meet a band of prophets coming down from the high place with a lute and a timbrel Ishmuel 105 and but now bring me a minstrel to Melashim 315 Habakkuk needed pleasantness more than all of them to sweeten that place which is the mukva to which he was previously bound this was in order to draw the spirit of prophecy upon himself it is the same for all the other prophets except for Moses who rose above all the prophets of the world happy is his portion 25 come and behold when the Israel left Egypt their spirits were broken and they heard the praises of angels but they could not celebrate when all the legions of angels and chariots left with the Shechinah they all raised their voices in praise and song before the Holy One blessed be he and the Holy One blessed be he aroused the spirits of Israel and they heard the praises of the angels. As their spirits remained within them and did not fly from them, twenty six one knows and feels his broken bones and broken spirit only after he leaves his work. Israel only tasted death when they departed from Egypt, but the Holy One, blessed be he, healed them as is written, and Hashem went before them by day. Shema 1321. All the roads exuded sense of healing which entered their bodies, and they were healed from the sound of the praises that they heard, they rejoiced and reposed and purified their spirit. 27 Pharaoh and all his people went after Israel to accompany them until they left Egypt. Likewise, all the supreme princes who were appointed over them and the other nations accompanied the Shechinah and all of Israel until they camped at Itam on the edge of the wilderness. This is what is written, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, though that was near but 17 that was near means because that oath is near the oath which Abimelech swore to the patriarchs. Because of the good that the Philistines did for the patriarchs, as is written, but according to the kindness that I have done to you, you shall do to me and to the land in which you have sojourned. Beersheet 2123, section 23. Deaths we hear that at the time of the first Passover, there were three revengeful deaths performed against Egypt the one that related to the deaths of the firstborn, the one that God killed at midnight, and the one when Pharaoh saw the death in his own house. Rabbi Shimon says that Pharaoh himself killed all the ministers and advisors who counseled him to refuse to send out the children of Israel. Then he called Moses and Aaron and told them to leave and bless me also. Then he accompanied them out of the country. 28. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, it is written before, and Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants. Shemot 1230. Come and behold, recognize the supernal revenge that the Holy One blessed. Be he performed against Egypt. There were three deaths, one that related to the firstborn in Egypt, as they killed whoever was in their way, one that the Holy One blessed be he killed at midnight, and one when Pharaoh saw the death in his house among his children and servants, he arose and emboldened himself and killed the ministers, the rulers, and all those who advised him to refuse to send out the people until the Torah bore witness against him. He arose actually at night, meaning with the judgments of the Mukbah that is called night as the night which is the Mukbah slew the firstborn and took revenge. So did Pharaoh arise in the land of Egypt, slay and take revenge against his rulers, ministers, his appointees, and all types of officers. This is the meaning of and Pharaoh arose in the night, he arose to kill and destroy twenty nine. The nature of a dog is that when you hit him with a stone, he goes and bites its neighbor. Pharaoh did likewise afterwards, he went out in the marketplaces and announced. Rise up and get you out from among my people. Shemot 1231. You killed all the inhabitants of the city, you killed the rulers and ministers and all the members of my household. Hence it is written, and he called Moses and Aaron by night of it, since everything was caused by you, and bless me also of it. 32 by not killing me afterwards, he himself accompanied them and took them out of the country. This is what is written, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go. Section 3 And Elohim led the people about Rabbi Yehuda wonders why after the children of Israel were circumcised, had offered the Passover sacrifice and were bound to God, he still calls them the people and not my people. Rabbi Shimon explains that it was because they were still attached to the mixed multitude. There follows a short story about Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda turning themselves away from an evil man wishing not to associate with him. Rabbi Yitzhak then speaks about Fred not. Yourself because of evildoers we learn that if it were not for the mixed multitudes the people of Israel would not have died because the molten calf would never have been made the holy one blessed be he had wanted at that time to liberate them from death and the yoke of other nations but that deed caused ruin to everything the rabbi saying that Moses instructed the people to accept the mixed multitudes and dispute gently about how many of the multitudes were from the nation of Israel. Rabbi Shimon talks about the jubilee the fifty gates of Bina and the fifty days that Israel lingered to receive the Torah he explains why Moses took the bones of Joseph with him when they left Egypt Sarah the daughter of Asher showed Moses where the bones were hidden thirty and Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the sea of Suf namely to make way to his place in order to eventually split the sea of Suf if not for this it would have been enough to simply lead them. Through the wilderness and not by way of the sea of Suf, Rabbi Yehuda said why the difference when Israel were in Egypt it is written let my people go Shemot 51 if you refuse to let my people go Shemot 104 and Israel is my son my firstborn Shemot 422 they were not circumcised at that time and were not bound to the Holy One blessed be he properly but once they were circumcised had offered the Passover sacrifice and were bound to him he calls them the people and not my people 31. He answers it was due to the mixed multitude that attached themselves to them and were mixed with them that he calls them the people and not my people it is written and Hashem plagued the people for the calf they made Shemot 3235 the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and the people saw that Moses delayed Ibn 1 during a period when the children of Israel were in a decadent state he calls them simply the people and not my people 32 Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda. Were traveling from Shajalad with camels tied to one
Yisrael come and behold this deed and iniquity was the cause of Yisrael's exile 35 for we studied that the Holy One blessed be he desired that Yisrael be at that time during the reception of the Torah as the supernal angels and he desired to liberate them from everything freedom have from death and liberation from the yoke of other nations as is said engraved have on the tablets Shema 3216 do not pronounce it with the Baalei but rather only with the Yisrael. 36 as soon as that deed was done they instigated everything they caused the deaths of thousands among Israel they caused submission to other kingdoms and they caused the breaking of the original tablets all this was due to the connection of the mixed multitudes who joined with them 37 here too due to the motley crowd they were not called children of Israel nor Israel nor my people but merely the people you may reason that it is indeed written and the children of Israel went up. Arm Shema 1318 this is because the motley crowd had not yet joined up with them when they first rose out of Egypt thus he still calls them the children of Israel they are referred to as the people as soon as they were joined with them as mentioned in the scripture and a mixed multitude went up also with them Shema 1238 38 Rabbi Yossi insisted and said it is written for as you have seen Egypt today you will never see them again Shema 1413 yet every day they saw the mixed. Multitude who were Egyptians, Rabbi Yehuda said it is written a mixed multitude and not Egypt, for there were many other nations in Egypt, and from them came the motley crowd. Moreover, all of them were circumcised, and since they were circumcised, they were not considered Egyptians. 39. According to the instructions of Moses, they accepted them. This is what the verse said Go get you down, for your people have become corrupt. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Shema 327 to 8. I commanded them, is written, which means that Moses had instructed them to accept the mixed multitudes, and the children of Israel went up armed, had came out of the land of Egypt, meaning one out of five had Shemisha were Israel. Rabbi Yehuda said five were of Israel, and one from the mixed multitudes. Rabbi Yehuda said came one out of fifty had Shemisha were of the mixed multitudes. Forty. Rabbi Shimon said the Jubilee, which is by did take them up from the land of. Egypt therefore it is written and the children of Israel went up armed had came out of the land of Egypt which refers to by the call to be Yubal that contains fifty Hebshim gates if not for Yubal they would not have left therefore they tarried fifty days to receive the Torah the Torah did emerge and was given from that place of Yubal therefore Kamashim is without a Bob meaning that if it had meant armed IT would have been spelled with a Bob but it only indicates the number fifty Hebshim which is the secret of Jubilee due to it the children of Israel went up from Egypt 41 and Moses took the bones of Joseph Shema 1319 he asks why did Moses bring up his bones he answers it is because he was the first to descend into exile and in addition only he possessed the sign for the redemption namely will surely visit you but he bound Israel by oath in this this is what is written he had laid an oath on the children of Israel of it and this was Explained 42 fortunate is the part of Moses for Israel were occupied with borrowing silver from Egypt and Moses was occupied with the oath of Joseph some said that his casket was in the Nile River and he raised it by the holy name Moses also said Joseph the time for the redemption of Israel has arrived and he said rise ox and he rose since Joseph is called ox as is written his first ling of his herd grandeur is his Devarim 3317 some said he was among the kings of Egypt and he ascended from there and some said that they put him into the Nile in order that they would not make him into an idol search the daughter of Asher who was alive during the happening showed Moses his place section 4 and Hashem went before them by day Rabbi Yossi says that it is necessary to be occupied with the Torah day and night and that one must rise after midnight to study Torah because it is then that the holy one blessed be he enters into the garden of Eden too. Delight himself with the righteous there he draws a thread of kindness during the day for those who occupy themselves with Torah in the night Rabbi Yitzhak talks about and Hashem went before them by day saying that the Sheshan traveled with the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and King David they are all the holy chariot of above the people traveled day and night when they left Egypt so that they would be complete with everything night and day together. The aspect of Zer and Ben and the aspect of Mukbah the pillar of cloud was Jesus Abraham and the pillar of fire was Bur Isaac so that Israel was illuminated by day and by night again we are told of the fifty days delay after their redemption from Egypt before they received the Torah at Mount Sinai then the fifty days of Jubilee the fifty gates of Bina dwelled upon them Rabbi Yitzhak says that the Pharaoh's wise men and sorcerers who saw that Israel were traveling by day and by night told him that the people had fled. 43 and Hashem went before them by day Shemot 1321 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying to the chief musician upon the hind of Don a Psalm of David Tehillim 221 how beloved is the Torah before the Holy One blessed be he for anyone who is occupied with Torah is beloved above and below the Holy One blessed be he hearkens to his words he does not forsake him in this world and he does not forsake him in the world to come 44 it is necessary to be occupied with the Torah by day and night as is written but you shall meditate there in day and night Yahashua 18 and if my covenant be not day and night your mayah 3325 he asks it is justified by day which is a time for work for everybody but during the night which is a time for rest why is it necessary to be occupied with Torah he answers so that a complete holy name will be present by him for as there is no day without night and it is only complete when one is with the other so is it necessary for the Torah to be present with it Person day and night the completeness should be with the person day and night 45 we have learned that the main part of the night is from midnight and further even though the first half of the night is part of the night the holy one blessed be he enters the garden of Eden at midnight to delight himself with the righteous who are there then a person should wake up and become occupied with Torah 46 we have learned that the holy one blessed be he hearkens to the voices of all the righteous in the garden of Eden as is written you who dwell in the gardens the companions hearken to your voice cause me to hear it sure hashari made 113 they have already explained it you who dwell in the gardens is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut that praises the holy one blessed be he with the praise of the Torah during the night blessed is the portion of he who joins with her to praise the holy one blessed be he with the praise of Torah 47 when the morning arrives it Congregation of Israel comes which is Malchut and delights with the Holy One blessed be he and he extends the scepter of kindness not only to her but to all those who join her we have learned it is written yet Hashem will command his steadfast love in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. Tehillim 429 this means that the Holy One blessed be he draws a thread of kindness during the day for he who occupies himself with Torah during the night therefore Malchut is called it. Hind of Don since she praises the Holy One blessed be he during the night with the praise of Torah 48 Rabbi Shimon said at the time when morning is to light up the light becomes darkened and blackened and the blackness is prevalent and a wife unites with her husband for we have learned that at the third watch a wife converses with her husband namely male and female to mate with him and she enters his sanctuary 49 when the sun must set the night lights up and comes and takes him. Then all the gates are closed, the donkeys bray and the dogs bark at midnight, the king starts to arise, and the queen, which is Malchut, starts to sing the king who is Zeir and comes and knocks on the gate of the sanctuary and says, Open for me, my sister, my love, Sher Hasharim 52. Then he delights with the souls of the righteous. 50 blessed is the portion of he who arose at that time with words of Torah. Therefore, all the inhabitants of the sanctuary of the queen must arise at that time to praise the king, and they all praise before him. The praise that rises from this world, which is far from him, is more acceptable to the Holy One. Blessed be he than all the rest. 51. When the night is gone, the morning comes, and it becomes dark. The king and the queen are in the secret of gladness, meaning coupling, and he gives presents to her and to all those in the sanctuary. Fortunate is he who is counted among the members of the sanctuary. 52. And Hashem went before them by day, and Hashem. Means the Holy One blessed be he and his court of law which is Malchut because the Bob equals and a Bob Y U D Bob A and Hashem includes Malchut Rabbi Yitzhak said we learned that the Sheshana travels with the patriarchs because went before them by day is Abraham in a pillar of a cloud is Isaac and to lead them the way is Jacob of whom it is written and Jacob went on his way bear she 322 by night in a pillar of fire to give them light is King David 53 they are all the holy
In the pillar of a cloud refers to Abraham who is Jesus, and by night in the pillar of fire refers to Isaac who is pure. If so, we can ask where is Jacob who is Tiferet? He answers in the first word he is mentioned, and there he dwells as is written, and Hashem which is Tiferet and Malchut, and Jacob is Tiferet 55, and by night in the pillar of fire in order to illuminate on this side by day with Jesus, and on that side by night with pure. This was in order that when the Egyptians chased after them with their chariots and horsemen, they would drown, and not even one of them would survive in order to glorify the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he for this. He needed the aspect of pure in order to go day and night means the illuminating mirror, which is Zeir and that is called day, and the mirror that does not illuminate, which is Malchut, that is called night. It was also done in order to fool the Egyptians, so they would say that it was a coincidence, and it was not Hashem who. Delivered them therefore they were traveling day and night as if they were fleeing as written the princes of Son are become fools. Yeshayah 19.13 He turns wise men backwards. Yeshayah 4425 Therefore they traveled day and night. 56 Rabbi Abba said happy is the portion of Israel for the Holy One. Blessed be he delivered them from Egypt in order that they should be his portion and inheritance come and behold from the side of Jubilee which is by the there is freedom for Israel and so in the future to come it is written and it shall come to pass on that day that a great horn shall be blown. Yeshayah 2713 because of that Jubilee they were delayed for 50 days after their redemption from Egypt to receive the Torah and to approach Mount Sinai. This was because there are 50 gates in Jubilee and in order to better themselves by them they needed 50 days since they traveled during the day they also traveled during the night so that it would all be one day and there would be no separation between day and night which are male and female 58 and even more they all went at their leisure according to their own desire in order to combine day and night which are male and female on the day that they received the Torah there were 50 complete days and nights as it should be there is no day without night and there is no night without day for there is no completeness to Zeir and without Malchut and there is no completeness to Malchut without Zeir and night and day are called one day as is written and there was evening and there was morning one day Beersheet 15 when they traveled 50 whole days these 50 days of Jubilee dwelt upon them which are the 50 gates of Bina and then the Torah was given to them through the side of Jubilee therefore they traveled day and night 59 Rabbi Abba said it is written and it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim Beersheet 271 why we have explained that one who loves the wicked his eyes Become dim come and behold in Isaac who is pure night is included which is Malchut and the night is not bright therefore his eyes were dim it is all one because the inclusion of night in Isaac is in the same context as the love of Isaac for Esau 60 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying and it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled Shemot 145 he asks and it was told who told him he answers we have explained that his wise men and sorcerers gathered about him and informed him that the people had fled why did they say this because they saw in their wisdom that Israel were traveling day and night they said they were fleeing and they saw that they were not traveling on the straight road as is written and they turned and encamped before Pi Hakai Radu and they informed him of this also therefore he chased after them section 5 and he took 600 chosen chariots Rabbi Yussi says that the 600 chosen chariots corresponds to the number of the children of Israel, about 600,000 men on foot. Rabbi Shia tells us that when the Holy One blessed be, he gives dominion to the ministers of the nations above, he gives it to their nations below, and when he brings them down from their grade above, he brings down their nations below. The minister of Egypt led the chariots of the other peoples, all of whom fell in the sea. Rabbi Shia explains how Pharaoh harnessed the Mares before the stallions, then the stallions before the Mares. Depending on whether he wanted them to run or to fight, he compares this to the verse, and Hashem went before them by day, saying that afterwards the Shechinah went behind the children of Israel 61, and he took 600 chosen chariots. If it's seven, he asks why 600 chariots. Rabbi Yussi said this corresponds to the number of the children of Israel, as is written about 600,000 men on foot. Shemot 1237, the word chosen corresponds to the men that were in Israel who were the principal part of all the nation of Israel and all the chariots of Egypt were all the other chariots that were secondary and behind the 600 that were mentioned earlier they correspond to the children in Israel who were not included in the 600,000 men on foot but were secondary to them as is said besides children he did everything according to the advice of his sorcerers and wise men and captains over every one of them he did everything with wisdom for they corresponded to the celestial levels which are placed two and one over them Rabbi Yitzhak said this accords with the Aramaic translation stimulating officers for they were swift in everything 62 and he took 600 chosen chariots Rabbi Shia said it is written that Hashem shall punish the host of the high ones on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth Yeshayah 2421 at the time that the Holy One blessed be he gives dominion to the ministers of the nations above he gives it to their nations below and when he brings them down from their grade above he brings down their nations below and he took 600 chosen chariots it was their minister who took them we have established that he led the chariots of the other peoples for these 600 chariots were not from Egypt but were only from the other nations they all fell in the army camp of Sisera and this is the meaning of 600 chariots chosen afterwards all the chariots of Egypt for once it is written and all the chariots of Egypt then 600 chosen chariots I as superfluous certainly 600 chosen chariots I as only from the other nations and therefore it says afterwards and all the chariots of Egypt 63 it is written I compare you all my love to Amir of the chariots of Pharaoh Sher Hashirim 19 come and behold he appeared in the image of Amir to Pharaoh's horses and therefore they chased after her into the sea and they explained this but to Amir of it Chariots of Pharaoh come and behold when Pharaoh was chasing after the children of Israel what did he do he took female horses and harnessed them to the chariot up front first and harnessed male horses behind them the males warmed to the females but the females were reluctant and hastened to run when they approached Israel he took the females and placed them behind and the male horses in front in order to do harm to Israel and to war against them because the male horses were stronger than the females for war 64 similar to this and Hashem went before them by day Shemot 1321 afterwards the Shechinah returned to the rear of Israel as it is written and the angel of Hashem moved and went behind them Shemot 1419 therefore I compare you all my love section 6 and when Pharaoh drew near Rabbi Yussi tells us that Pharaoh actually caused the children of Israel to come closer to the Holy One blessed be he because it is in times of tribulation that they Remember and pray to him, and he becomes full of compassion for them. Speaking of Moses, Rabbi Shimon said that the shepherd of the people is really the whole people, for if he is deserving, then all the people are righteous, and if he is not, the people are punished because of him. Rabbi Yehuda concludes that the merit of Jacob protected the congregation of Israel. 65 And when Pharaoh drew near Shema 14:10, this passage has already established that he brought close his whole army and chariot riders to do battle. Rabbi Yussi said, We have learned here that he drew them closer to repentance, therefore it is written, and when Pharaoh drew near others and not, and Pharaoh drew near himself. 66 It is written, Hashem, in trouble have they sought you. They poured out a silent prayer. Yeshayah 2616 In trouble have they sought you means Israel did not seek the Holy One. Blessed be he at times of comfort, only when they have trouble do they all remember and seek him. They poured out a Silent prayer they all pray with prayers and beseeching and pour out prayers before him when when your chastening was upon them a bit at the time that the Holy One blessed be he chastened them with his with the Holy One blessed be he stands over them with mercy their voice is favorable to him in order to take revenge from their enemies and he becomes full of compassion for them 67 as we have explained the parable of the dove with the hawk so it is with Israel they were approaching the sea and saw the sea before them raging and storming its waves were towering above and they feared they raised their eyes and saw Pharaoh and his army and flying stones and arrows and they feared greatly what did they do and the children of Israel cried out who caused the children of Israel to come closer to their father in heaven Pharaoh this is what is written and when Pharaoh drew near it has already been explained 68 and Moses said to the people fear not stand still and see the Salvation of Hashem Shemot 1413 Rabbi Shimon said fortunate is the portion of Israel that a shepherd like Moses
from the judgment Rabbi Yehuda said the merit of Jacob protected the congregation of Israel. This is what is written. If not for Hashem who was with us, let Israel now say Tehillim 1241 who is Israel Sabah, namely Jacob section 7 Hashem shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Rabbi Abba says that one who observes the Sabbath is as though he observed the whole Torah as the Sabbath is the delight of everything. One should invite the Sabbath in like a guest on. The Sabbath secular speech is forbidden because it stimulates secular things above and the Sabbath becomes blemished when Pharaoh was coming to do battle with Israel. Hashem shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. This meant that the arousal took place from above. The children of Israel did not need to arouse anything from below. Rabbi Yossi wonders why if Hashem is always a connotation of mercy there seemed to be no mercy in the act of drowning the Egyptians. Rabbi Yehuda quotes. Rabbi Shimon is saying that the judgment had been tempered with mercy since God had desired their honor that they be buried in the ground and he had stretched out his hand so the earth would accept them if Israel had aroused from below judgment would not have been executed with mercy even though Hashem does judgment he is still compassionate for his creation. 70 Hashem shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Shemad 1414 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying if you restrain your foot because of the Shabbat from pursuing your business on my holy day Shea 5813 fortunate are Israel that the Holy One blessed be he desires them and wishes to join with them more than all the nations of the world because of his love for them he brought them close to him and gave them the Torah and the Shabbat which is holier than all the other days and in IT is rest from everything and the joy of everyone Shabbat is equal to the entire Torah and one who observes the Shabbat is as Though he observed the whole Torah 71 and called the Shabbat a delight of it, namely delight of all delight of the soul and the body delight of those above and those below and call the Shabbat, he asks what does call mean, he answers its meaning, I ask that he should invite it as is written, holy gatherings, lit callings of holiness, Vayikra 234, which means invited from the holiness as when inviting a guest to his home and, and call the Shabbat a delight is that you should call and invite it. As you invite a guest with a set table with a house which is in order as it should be with proper food and drink more than on the other days and call the Shabbat, meaning beforehand that you should add from the weekday to the holy, the holy day of Hashem honorable of it is Yom Kippur day of atonement and there are two that are one because Yom Kippur and Shabbat are one therefore it says immediately following them and you shall honor it not doing your own ways in the singular as we explained. 72 Nor pursuing your own business nor speaking of vain matters Yeshayah 5813 And it is explained that your speech of Shabbat should not be like your speech of weekday because the talk secular speech that is spoken on Shabbat rises and stimulates secular things above and the Shabbat becomes blemished one who invites a guest should strive to please him and not someone else 73 Come and behold that word that comes from the mouth of a person rises and stimulates an awakening above either for good or for evil and whoever dwells in the delight of Shabbat is forbidden to stir to secular subjects because he causes a blemish on the holy day one who participates in the celebration of a king is not permitted to forsake the king and deal with someone else 74 Every day it is necessary to perform an action to walk in from below of what must be awakened but on Shabbat it is necessary to awaken only in the words of the name and the holiness of the day and not in any other thing for an Awakening from below is not necessary on Shabbat 75 come and behold when Pharaoh approached to do battle with Israel the Holy One blessed be he did not want Israel to awaken from below at all because the patriarchs preceded and caused this awakening from above and their merits stood before him the Holy One blessed be he did not want Israel to arouse from below at all this is the meaning of Hashem shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace assuredly you shall hold your peace and do not arouse what is not needed by you the reason is mentioned later and here the Holy Name is included in imprinted letters Yudhi Hei Bapai which indicate mercy for it says Hashem shall fight for you even though Yudhi Hei Bapai is mercy and war is judgment the friends have already commented on this as is discussed ahead of US 76 Rabbi Yussi and Rabbi Yehuda were traveling on the road Rabbi Yussi said to Rabbi Yehuda most certainly we have learned that Hashem is always a connotation of Mercy and even though he carries out wars and executes judgment that judgment is with mercy yet here we saw that it is written Hashem shall fight for you but no mercy was visible at all in that judgment for it is written there remained not so much as one of them Shemot 1428 77 he said to him this subject I heard from Rabbi Shimon for he said that there was judgment with mercy even here because the sea covered them over they perished and afterwards the sea ejected them but the Holy One. Blessed be he desired their honor that they should be buried in the ground the earth did not want to accept them until the Holy One blessed be he stretched out his right hand to her and she accepted them this is the meaning of you stretched out your right hand the earth swallowed them Shemot 1512 and because of this this judgment was tempered with mercy 78 for that reason the Holy One blessed be he did not want the children of Israel to arouse anything in the world from below for it. Children of Israel had aroused something from below the name of mercy would not have been aroused and judgment would not have been executed with mercy this is what is written Hashem shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace you should not arouse anything because the name of mercy must be aroused upon them in order to do the judgment with mercy therefore it is necessary not to make a blemish and arouse something else namely judgment without mercy and awakening from below would cause the activation of only judgment 79 he said to him but it is written then shall Hashem go out and fight against those nations Zechariah 143 was this judgment with mercy he said to him certainly the judgment was with mercy because their death was not like the death of the other people of the world rather the holy one blessed be he had mercy on them so that their death should not be like those of the other people of the world for they were slain gently without pain namely his flesh was Consumed away while he stands upon his feet of the twelve hence the judgment contained mercy eighty this name always refers to judgment with mercy except for one place as written Hashem shall go forth like a mighty man Yeshayah 4213 he asks is Hashem only like a mighty one but not actually mighty he says rather he will change his garments and don other garments that is he will change his trade of mercy and don the garment of judgment like a man of war of it shall he change his weapons from mercy to judgment so we see that in this place the mercy was changed to become judgment eighty one and with all this only the judgment is here more than mercy yet there is some mercy here as it is written like a mighty man and not an actual mighty man who is completely judgment like a man of war of it and not literally a man of war who is completely judgment even though he does judgment he is still compassionate for his creations and therefore Hashem shall fight for you most certainly and you shall hold your peace in order that you shall not arouse judgment alone as mentioned earlier blessed is the portion of Israel that the Holy One blessed be he has selected them for his portion and his legacy as is written for the portion of Hashem is his people Jacob is a lot of his inheritance to Barim 329 section 8 why do you cry out to me Rabbi Yehuda speaks about Jonah crying out to Hashem out of the belly of the fish Rabbi Lazar confirms his statement that the fish died while Jonah was still in its belly and says that when Jonah prayed his prayer God revived the fish and brought it out to the dry land where it vomited out Jonah he returns to the subject of the splitting of the sea telling us that God told the children of Israel to go forward and refrain from speaking because this was not a time for prayer 82 and Hashem said to Moses why do you cry out to me Shemot 1415 this is explained in Sifr, it's Neuda, the hidden book and there. Is it secret? And Hashem said to Moses, Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying, Then Jonah prayed to Hashem his Elohim out of the fish's belly, Yonah 22, and now Hashem had appointed a great fish, Ibid 1 appointed means as you say, and the king appointed them a daily provision, Daniel 15, as well as who has appointed your food, Ibid 10, which is a term of giving a portion, 83. But this passage should have said, And Hashem appointed Jonah for the fish, for he was the portion that Hashem sent to the fish, and he answers, Assuredly, this fish was a portion for Jonah to guard him from all the other fish of the sea, and that he would be concealed in it. As soon as Hashem brought him into the fish, Jonah saw in its belly the breadth of his entrails, which was like a large chamber, and the two eyes of the fish were brightly illuminating like the sun. There was a precious stone in its entrails that shone on for him, and he saw everything existing in the sea and in its depths, 84, and
Hashem out of my distress and it is not written I was in distress or I dwelt in distress but rather I cried out of distress as a fish of the sea distressed me out of the belly of Sheol I cried Yonah 23 for it had died it is not written out of the belly of a living thing or out the belly of a fish but rather it was definitely dead and therefore it was called Sheol 87 as soon as he prayed his prayer the Holy One blessed be he accepted it he revived that fish and brought it out to the dry land before the eyes of everyone as is written and Hashem spoke to the fish and it vomited out Jonah Yonah 211 they all saw the work of the Holy One blessed be 88 it is written and Jonah prayed to Hashem his Elohim from the fish's belly meaning that he prayed to the place to which he was bound the aspect of Malchut this is understood from the words Hashem his Elohim it is not written and he prayed to Hashem and nothing more but Hashem his Elohim which alludes to the aspect to which he was bound here also and Hashem said to Moses why do you cry to me to me namely to my aspect which is Typhara to which Moses was connected but rather it was dependent upon Mazel as it is written that the splitting of the Red Sea is derived from Mazel the secret of the Holy Din of Beard 89 speak to the children of Israel that they go forward Shema 1415 meaning that they should go forward and refrain from speaking excessively because now is not a time for prayer he asks that they go forward to which place did he command them to go seeing that they were camping by the sea he answers it refers to the above as it is written why do you cry to me which means Typhara as mentioned earlier they all stood in this place in Typhara for all the children of Israel were connected to Typhara therefore he said that they go forward that the children of Israel should go forth from Typhara and come and connect with Mazel which is Din of Beard as mentioned for now is not the time for Typhoret but rather the matter depends upon Mazel as mentioned before section 9 but lift up your rod Rabbi Lazar says that the rod whether it is called the rod of Moses or the rod of Elohim is for the purpose of rekindling the aspect of Bura Rabbi Shimon clarifies that since water emerges from the side of Bura lift up your rod is to dry up the water and stretch out your hand is to return the water and spill it over the Egyptians 90 but lift up your rod Shemot 1416 lift up your rod upon which is etched the holy name and stretch your hand to the side of the holy name as soon as the water see the holy name they will flee from it therefore stretch your hand to one side of the rod because the other sides of the rod will be necessary for other matters namely to hit the rod 91 Rabbi Lazar said I see that sometimes this rod is called the rod of Elohim and sometimes it is called the rod of Moses Rabbi. Shimon said in the book of Rabbi Hamdan Asaba the elder he says that it is all one whether it says the rod of the Holy One blessed be he or the rod of Moses the purpose of this rod is to rekindle the aspect of Bura therefore the verse says stretch out your hand which means the left hand which is at the side of Bura 92 Rabbi Shimon said woe to those who do not see and do not look at the Torah the Torah calls before them daily but they do not pay attention come and behold water rises in the world and water emerges from the side of Bura but now the Holy One blessed be he wanted to dry up the water thus why does the verse say and stretch out your hand which is the left hand namely Bura 93 he answers rather lift up your rod is to dry up the water and stretch out your hand is to return the water to activate the side of Bura and to turn the water on Egypt therefore there are two things here for it is written lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divided one element is to dry out the water and the other is to turn the water over Egypt 94 he asks how was it possible to dry the land in the midst of the sea for there were pits in it he answers the holy one blessed be he performed a miracle within a miracle as is written and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea Shema 158 they were walking on the dry ground within the sea this is what is written and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground Shema 1422 section 10 and he took off their chariot wheels Rabbi Shimon opens with and he took off their chariot wheels and now as I beheld the living creatures behold one will upon the earth by the living creatures he tells us that the holy one blessed be he establishes his dominion through the patriarchs Jacob is attached to the tree of life which never has any death in it so God made him the chosen among the patriarchs the thrust of this Whole section is that when the Holy One blessed be he wants to remove someone from power on this earth he first removes their dominion above we read about the legions of above with all the chariots entwined together and under the command of the highest holy beast they all go and swim in the great sea where the waves are judgments Rabbi Yitzhak tells us that when the children of Israel approached the Red Sea the Holy One blessed be he called the minister who was appointed over the sea and told him that it was time to fulfill the condition that had been made when the sea was first created that it should split before his children when the time came and the reason that the Egyptians were killed by the sea was that the upper sea aroused against them the minister over Egypt had oppressed the congregation of Israel with enslavement so he was broken first and then all the kingdoms below were broken 95 and he took off their chariot wheels Shema 1425 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse now as I beheld the living creatures behold one will upon the earth by the living creatures Yeshua 115 this passage has been explained and we studied it yet come and behold the holy one blessed be he shows his dominion in every way and his dominion will not depart forever and ever 96 and he establishes his dominion through the patriarchs he took Abraham and maintained the world through him as written these are the generations of the heavens and earth when they were created had behind Baram Bereshit 24 and they explained it do not read it as behind Baram but rather Abraham and Abraham for heaven and earth had been maintained through him he took Isaac and planted the world through him so it should exist always this is what is written and my covenant will I establish with Isaac Bereshit 1721 he took Jacob and placed him before him and was delighted with him and glorified himself with him this is what is written Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 97 come and behold Jacob is attached to the tree of life which never has any death in it for all the living are established and perfected in this tree that gives life to all that grasp onto it therefore Jacob did not die and when did he die it occurred when it was written he gathered up his feet into the bed Bereshit 4933 the bed is as you say behold it is his litter that of Solomon Sher Hasherim 27 which is Malchut about this bed it is written her feet go down to death Mishle 55 therefore it is written he gathered up his feet into the bed and then and he expired and was gathered unto his people but as long as he held onto the tree of life which is Zeir and he did not die because death is only from the aspect of Malchut as explained and the Holy One blessed be he made Jacob the chosen among the patriarchs this is what is written Jacob whom I have chosen Yeshua 418 98 come and behold see all the legions of above that are drawn from it. Four companies of the Shechinah which are the wheels all the chariots are entwined with each other levels with levels the upper and the lower evolve the one from the other and combine the one with the other and there is a holy living creature over them which is the Nukba for there are four living creatures as mentioned and the Nukba is the fourth all the multitude hosts and the legions travel under her command they travel and camp according to her instructions for all the chariots and the living creatures and the wheels possess only what they receive from this highest holy living creature 99 this is a living creature that all the other living creatures hold onto and from her evolve many other living creatures upon living creatures meaning that many living creatures evolved one from another and levels combined with levels all those of above and of below go and swim in the sea which is the Nukba for those of above are included in her they give forth influence to her and the lower are included in her and receive from her this is what is written so is this great and wide sea wherein are creeping things innumerable Tehillim 10425 100 when the sea raises its waves which are judgments all the ships go up and down meaning they go up onto the heavens and down to the depths it is stormy and a strong wind blows over it powerfully and the fish of the sea are scattered to every side these to east and these to west these to north and these to south these fish of it sea sea assign on all the people of the world because of their sin and they take them and swallow them in caves in the ground 101 none of the ships move from their places or go up or down except when the one leader of the sea arrives and knows how to settle and appease the stormy wind of the sea as soon as he rises over the sea it rests from its rage and becomes placid and all the ships continue on their straight course and do not turn right or left this is what is written there go the Ships, this is a Leviathan whom you have made to play their end of it. 26. This is exact, which is the secret of Yezid of Zeir and that is called this MASC, which is the secret of the central column. All the fish of the sea gather
head and arms and the body are all as they should and each is called by its name similarly below in the lower sea which is Malchut there is also the head of the sea the arms of the sea and the body of the sea 104 it is written Zebulun shall dwell at the shore of the seas Bear she 4913 he asks but there was only one sea in his heritage why does it say at the shore of the seas he answers but what does the shore of the seas mean for the comrades certainly explained it in accordance with the supernal secret and his border shall be exiled and of it is as it is written that came out of the loins also thigh of Jacob Shema 15 for Zebulun was the right thigh of the body which is Netzach and therefore the Torah verse says and his border also thigh the sea of Galilee was in his inheritance and from here the purple fish is available for the purple dye 105 come and behold how many chariots upon chariots there are and the wheels of the chariot race speedily and the supports of the chariot do not refrain from traveling on them and it is so for all of them come and behold examine the chariot of the minister over Egypt as was explained there was no complete chariot to be found as it is written and he took off their chariot wheels Shema 1425 there were many chariots that traveled upon the support of one will that was appointed over them as soon as it was removed from its dominion and all the chariots were removed from their control and could not travel then all of those below in this world were removed from their dominion as is written and Egypt even Pharaoh and all those who trust in him your Mayah 4625 106 at that time the government of Egypt ruled over all the other nations as soon as the power of Egypt was crushed the power of the other nations was broken how do we know for it is written and the chiefs of Edom shall be amazed Shema 1515 and the people shall hear and be afraid of it 14 because at that time they were all attached to it service of Egypt they depended upon Egypt to help them and they all requested assistance from Egypt to strengthen themselves therefore when they heard of the mighty acts that the Holy One blessed be he performed in Egypt they were discouraged and were unable to stand firm and they all quaked and trembled and lost their power 107 certainly when their strength was broken above the strength of all those attached to him was broken for once the strength of all of them was broken above all those below were broken because of that strength which was broken first therefore he took off his chariot wheels lit wheel namely the strength from above as mentioned earlier that they drove heavily Shema 1425 once it was broken they could not move 108 come and behold it is so for it is not written and he took off his chariot wheels or chariot wheel meaning either both in plural or both in singular but rather it is written and he took off his chariot wheel will I a singular and his chariots is plural and that is because will have o f a n is the power to which all of them were attached as is written above it is therefore written in the singular form 109 we can also explain and he took off his chariots will come and behold happy is the portion of Israel that the holy one blessed be he wanted to join with them and to be their portion and that they should be his portion this is what is written and hold fast to him debarim 135 and but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim debarim 44 to Hashem indeed it is also written for Yah has chosen Jacob for himself Tehillim 1354 and for Hashem's portion is his people Jacob is a lot of his inheritance debarim 329 for he brought them forth from the holy seed to be his portion this is not so for the other side and the nations of the world which have no connection to zeir and therefore he gave them the holy Torah that was concealed 200 years before the world was created and this has already been explained because of his love he gave it to the children of Israel to follow and to cleave unto it 110 come and behold all the camps of above and all the chariots are all joined one to the other levels by levels those of above and those of below are bound together and it was explained that it is written so is this great and wide sea Tehillim 10425 and the living creature is over them which is the nukba that is from the chest and higher of Zeir and that receives from it three living creatures of Zeir and she is the fourth living creature that all receive from even the chariots of the other side and the nations of the world all the multitudes and the camps travel under her command according to her instructions they travel and by her word they rest when she travels they all travel because they are all joined to her 111 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he wanted to remove the multitudes of Pharaoh below he first removed their power as we Explained what did he do? He removed and detached that upper holy place that led all those chariots of the minister of Egypt above as every chariot was under its command, even those of the other side. As soon as it left, then all the camps and the chariots could not travel since they could not. The minister of Egypt was removed from his dominion with a flaming fire, and then the dominion of Egypt was removed. Therefore, they said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. What is the reason? Because they saw the minister of Egypt burned in fire. 112 Rabbi Yitzhak said, When Israel approached the sea, the Holy One blessed be he called the minister who was appointed over the sea. He said to him, At the time that I made the world, I appointed you over the sea and conditioned the sea so that its water should split before my children. Now the time has arrived for my children to pass in the midst of the sea, and afterwards it is written, and the sea returned to its strength. Have I Morning appeared Shema 1427 what is Itano the condition had Tineo that it had with the Holy One blessed be he when he created the world because Itano its strength I spelled with the same letters as Tineo his condition 113 Israel were dwelling by the sea and saw the waves rising and falling they raised their eyes and saw Pharaoh and his multitudes they feared and cried out as has already been explained the sea saw Tehillim 1143 he asks what did the sea see and he answers it saw the coffin of Joseph and fled from before it for what reason because it is written of Joseph and fled and went outside Beersheet 3912 due to this the sea saw it and fled it is written and he took off their chariot wheels let us flee from the face of Israel what is the reason it is because they saw the land of Egypt and it looked as though it was burning with fire then they said let us flee from the face of Israel 114 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yusi were traveling in the wilderness. Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Yusi, Come and I will tell you when the Holy One blessed be he wishes to remove a government on the earth he does not do it until he removes its dominion in heaven and he does not remove the dominion in the heaven until he appoints another in its place so that their service in heaven shall not be lacking in order to fulfill what is written and gives it to whomever he will. Daniel 414 Rabbi Yusi said certainly it is so 115 Rabbi Yusi opened the discussion saying Hashem our master how majestic is your name on all the earth. Tehillim 82 Hashem our master means that when the Holy One blessed be he wishes to break the power of the heathen nations he strengthens his judgment over them breaks them and removes their dominion from before himself. 116 who have Asher have set your glory above the heavens if it he asks it should have been written who have set or set your glory why who have set your glory he answers this is the secret of the river that is the deepest of all which is Bina and David prayed his prayer to draw from it unto the heaven which is Zeir and Pen and this Asher which is the name of Bina is as is written I will ever be what have Asher I am Shema 314 117 at the time that this deepest river which is Bina is drawn and goes out over the heaven which is Zeir and Pen then everything is joyous and the queen who is Malchut crowns herself with the king who is Zeir and Pen and all the worlds are joyful the domination of the heathen nations is removed before the queen and then all who cling to her raise their heads 118 in the meantime they saw a man coming with a load in front of him Rabbi Shia said let us go perhaps this man is a heathen or an ignoramus and it is forbidden to join him on the road Rabbi Yusi said let us sit here and watch perhaps he is a great man 119 in the meantime he passed before them and said to them at this crossing place which is dangerous I need company for I am afraid to travel Alone I know a different way let us turn off from this way and I wish to say to you I will not sin against you and I will not transgress what is written nor put a stumbling block before the blind Vayikra 1914 because you are like blind people on this way and you must not endanger yourselves Rabbi Yossi said blessed is the merciful one that we waited here they joined him he said to them do not speak anything here until we pass from here they turned to a different way 120 after they left that place he said to them on that other path the dangerous one a scholarly priest and a layman priest were once traveling the ignoramus priest arose against him at that place and killed him from that day and further anybody who passes that place endangers himself and robbers of the hills gather there to kill and rob people those who are aware of this do not pass there and the holy one blessed be he demands the blood of that priest every day 121 he opened the discussion with the verse this very day he will halt in Novi Shea 1032 the students of the Yeshiva have
With the king so from that day she went over to the left side and stood lurking over the world that sin killed Saul and his sons and many thousands and ten thousands of Israel died it was suspended until Sanchef came and terrified everyone 123 thus the meaning of this very day he will halt in no is the supernal day what is it this is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut who lost her attendance so that she remained without the right to join with the left because the priest is the right and therefore this very day he will halt in no to demand judgment for the slaying of no the city of the priest until through that sin the verse concludes and Lebanon shall fall by mighty one Yeshua 1034 124 come and behold it is written give it shall is fled of 29 he asks why is all mentioned here and he answers it is because he killed the priest in no and caused that the right arm should be uprooted from the world as mentioned because of his sin the inhabitants of his dwelling Givetch all fled from the king of Ashur Assyria from that day onward no person passed that place in order not to endanger himself Rabbi Yussi said to Rabbi Shia did I not say to you that he might be a great man 125 he opened the discussion saying happy is the man who finds wisdom Mishlei 313 happy is the man means like us who found you and learned from you a word of wisdom and the man who brings forth understanding even like us who waited for you to join with you such is a man for whom the Holy One blessed be he prepared a treasure on the road the face of Sheshan are referring to this it is written but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight Mishlei 418 they walked on 126 that man opened the discussion saying to David Assam the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof Tehillim 241 he asks to David Assam I has written in one place and in another place it is written Assam to David what is the difference between these he answers to David a psalm denotes a psalm that David said about the congregation of Israel which is Malchut a psalm to David denotes a psalm that David said about himself 127 the earth is Hashem's this is the holy one blessed be he meaning Zeir and the earth and the fullness thereof is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut and all the multitudes that join with her they are called the fullness thereof for assuredly it is so as is written the whole world is full of his glory. Yeshua 63 the world and they that dwell in it is the earth below that is called table world and is held by the judgment of above meaning Malchut this is what is written and he will judge the world in righteousness Tehillim 99 whether an individual a nation or the whole world they will be judged according to this judgment meaning from the judgment of Malchut that is called righteousness 128 come and behold Pharaoh was nurtured by this judgment and so he and all his people perished. After this judgment of Malchut was aroused against them the minister that was appointed to rule over them was removed and all those below perished as it is written and he took off their chariots wheels what is their chariots wheels meaning the chariots of Pharaoh and who is their will the meaning is that minister who rules over them therefore they all died in the sea and why in the sea rather the upper sea which is Malchut aroused against them and they were exterminated by it therefore. It is written that they drowned in the Red Sea Hepsuf Rabbi Yussi said assuredly it is so and therefore it is written drowned in the Red Sea Hepsuf which means the end Hepsaf of the levels namely Malchut that they were obliterated by her 129 Rabbi Shia said that they drove heavily what is the meaning of heavily from here we learn that a person is subsequently led on the path that he chooses to go by Pharaoh it is written and the heart of Pharaoh was hard lit heavy Shemot. 97 In the same manner the Holy One blessed be he led him with actual heaviness the Holy One blessed be he said to him evil one you made your heart heavy I will lead you in a similar way therefore they drove heavily 130 so that Egypt said let us flee from the face of Israel Egypt said is the minister who was appointed over Egypt namely their minister in the lofty heavens Rabbi Yossi said this is difficult since he was already removed from his dominion how was he able to chase after Israel 131 he answers but certainly it is thus the passage so that Egypt said I ask not their minister but rather Egypt of below for Hashem fights for them against Egypt namely Egypt of above their minister since their power was broken above their power and might was broken below hence it is written for Hashem fights for them against Egypt against Egypt specifically which is their power above namely their appointed minister and as we established above in the place where it says Merely king of Egypt meaning that Pharaoh is not mentioned the reference is to the minister who is appointed over Egypt here also against Egypt refers to the minister appointed over Egypt and so that Egypt said let us flee from the face of Israel refers to Egypt of below for they saw that their power and might of above were broken namely their minister 132 come and behold when this congregation of Israel becomes aroused which is Malchut all those who are affiliated with her and all the others of below namely all the nations are aroused Israel are higher above all because they grasp her by the trunk of the tree meaning when she is connected to Zeir and that is called the tree of life therefore Israel are more attached to it than all the nations of the world and when they become aroused to harm the children of Israel the power of those who dominate over them is broken meaning their ministers above 133 come and behold that minister the governor of Egypt oppressed Israel with many types of enslavements as we have established he was broken first and then all the kingdoms below were broken it is written for Hashem fights for them against Egypt indeed he fights for them section 11 and the angel of Elohim moved this passage contains an obscure but beautiful description of the energy flow on the supernal levels of sea with its waves of judgments rising and falling the angels which are the fish of that sea and it four directions of the world it ends by saying let those who have wings stand firm let those who have faces cover their faces until he departs on his journeys then and the angel of Elohim moved to Septuagint 134 and the angel of Elohim moved Shema 1419 Mishnah before there was pure air and before it shone the punctured stones were clogged three winds that are included in three were submerged and water was concealed under the holes by the 72 letters these stones returned to their place 135 after the 72 levels which are 3 times 72 letters the stones were split and punctured under an engraved bundle and the levels gathered together and became one group 136 afterwards they divided and became two levels of water half of the water congealed and half of it sank part went up and part went down from here the world started to divide 137 there is another bundle above that is engraved with 72 seals of the strong seal ring and in these the waves of the sea are submerged when they travel they divide to four corners one part rises for it illuminates from below upwards that is the nukva which is the secret of west one part descends for it illuminates from above downwards with the light of Shesedim namely Zeir and Pen, which is the secret of east one part towards the north which is the left column Bure, and one part towards the south which is the right column she said when they unite together there are flaming coals in the blade of the revolving sword 138 one Pillar is thrust into the sea the level which is a messenger of the supernal state, which is Malchut that is from the chest and higher, rises in this pillar higher and higher and looks at a distance to see a band of ships floating in the sea who observes the waves rising and falling because of the judgments that they contain and the wind which is the central column blows on them and quiets them and the fish of the sea which are the angels pull all these ships in all directions of the world in. This matter is Chakma revealed 139 when that level namely Metatron descended from above the chest a thousand stand at his right and a thousand stand at his left meaning that he draws Chakma, that is alluded to in the number 1000, both on his right and on his left and he returns from the chest and lower and sits in his place like a king on his throne when the sea which is Malchut swims to the four directions of the world that level goes out with it and returns with it and it returns. With the establishing of the king 140 that announcements are made let him who is of those who have eyes raise them higher and higher let those who have wings stand firm let those who have faces cover their faces until he departs on his journeys then and the angel of Elohim moved end of Tisipta section 12 she is like the merchant ships Rabbi she opens with the verse she is like the merchant ships she brings her food from afar and from afar she brings her food he says that the merchant ships is the congregation of Israel and that brings her food means by a level that dwells under that is the central column he speaks about all the rivers flow into the sea telling of the movement and flow through that level he is it down to the sea Malchut and from Bunnage he is it back and forth Rabbi Yitzhak says that those who merit the world to come will merit the pairing of supernal Abba and IMA which never separate 141 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse she is like the merchant ships she brings her food from afar Mishlei 3114 she is like the merchant ships refers to the congregation of Israel namely Malchut she brings her food from afar as is written behold the name of
Once, thither they return to go there, they return from that high supernal place, namely from Bana, they return again to Yezid, for the flow never halts from there, and they all gather in that place in Yezid, and why to go to go to that place of the sea which is Malchut, as we have learned, and what is the name of that level, it is called righteous, namely Yezid of Zeir and 143, Rabbi Yehuda said it is written, there go the ships, there is a Leviathan whom you have made to play therein. Tehillim 10,426, there go the ships, means that in the sea traverse and go the ships until they approach to join at that level which is Yezid, and it is written, there is a Leviathan whom you have made to play therein, because Leviathan is Yezid in Zeir and 144, Rabbi Yitzhak said there is one union that is kept in friendship very high and they never separate, which is the secret of the union of supernal Abba and Iama, which are the first three Sfarat of Bana, Rabbi Yehuda said who merits. That union he said to him one who has a share in the world to come which is Bana and it is specifically the world to come for one who did not merit the world to come which is Bana will not merit that union 145 Rabbi Yehuda said to him behold from here we learned what is written there is a Leviathan whom Habzai you have made to play therein so it seems Zay is mentioned which is Yezid and Zay this mask and Zathisfem are known to be Yezid and Malchut so we see that even if he does not merit Bana he merits to receive from the supernal union Rabbi Abba said you both speak well and these words of Rabbi Yehuda are beautifully exact and the Holy One blessed be he has prepared everything to delight the righteous with them this is what is written then shall you delight yourself in Hashem Yeshua 5814 section 13 and the angel of Elohim moved in this section we read of the great queen Malchut into whose hands the Holy One blessed be he gave. His authority she is called the way to the tree of life and when she travels her camps travel with her we are told that she is the angel of Elohim in the title verse and she is the messenger of all both from below to above and from above to below anyone who desires to speak to the Holy One blessed be he must first notify the Queen Malchut the congregation of Israel is also called Malchut who are placed under her jurisdiction Rabbi Yossi speaks about the pillar of cloud that always appears. With the Shechina Rabbi Shimon adds that the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire which are Abraham and Isaac are both present in the Shechina to conclude he says that the passage and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of the children of Israel moved and went behind them means that he moved from the side of Chesed and joined the side of Bura because the time had come to become tired with judgment 146 Rabbi Abba said how many thousands and how many ten thousands of holy. Camps does the Holy One blessed be he have namely those with supernal faces those with eyes those with weapons those who lament those who sob those who are merciful and those who judge above them he appointed the queen who is Malchut to serve before him in his sanctuary 147 corresponding to them the queen who is Malchut has armed camps of angels these armed camps have 60 faces they are all girded with swords encircling Malchut many are leaving and many are coming with six wings they fly. Over the whole world fiery coals are lit before each one so that its garments are a flaming fire and at his back is the blade of the sword that flames in the whole world to guard before her this is what is written and the bright blade of a revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life Bear she 324 148 he asks who is it that is called the way to the tree of life he answers this is the great queen who is Malchut which is the path to the great strong tree which is Zeir Anpin. Called the tree of life, it is written, Behold, it is his litter that of Solomon. Sixty valiant men are round about it of the mighty men of Israel. Sure, Hashirim 37, that is Israel of above, that is Zeir and all girt with swords. Ibid 149, when the queen travels, they all travel with her. This is what is written, and the angel of Elohim moved. Shemot 1419, he asks, is then Malchut called the angel of Elohim? Rabbi Abba said, Yes, come, and behold, Rabbi Shimon said, The Holy One, blessed be he. Prepared before him the holy sanctuary, the supernal sanctuary, the holy city, the supernal city, Jerusalem is called the holy city. All these are the names of Malchut. Whoever comes to the king enters only from that holy city, which is Malchut. From there begins the path to the king, because the path has been constructed from here. 150, hence it is written, This is the gate to Hashem, into which the righteous shall enter. Tehillim 11820, every mission that the king who is Zeir and desires goes. Forth from the house of the queen who is Malchut, every mission that comes from below the king who is Zeir and first enters before the queen and from there to the king. So in actuality the queen is the messenger of all both from below up and from above down. Therefore she is the messenger of all. This is what is written and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of Israel, meaning Israel of above which is Zeir and and the angel of Elohim who is Malchut. This is what is written about him. And Hashem went before them by day and by night and that they might go by day and night as we established earlier to mean Zeir and and Malchut. So we see that Malchut went in front of the children of Israel. This is what is written and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of the children of Israel moved 151. He asks is it an honor for the king who is Zeir and that the queen who is Malchut should go and do battle and go on a mission. He answers this is similar to a king who Married the lofty queen the king saw her preciousness and that she exceeded all the other queens in the world he said all the others are considered concubines compared this queen of mine she is above them all what shall I do for her all my house shall be in her hands the king made an announcement from now on all the matters of the king will be given over to the hand of the queen what did he do the king placed in her hands all his weapons all the men of war and the precious stones of the king all the treasures of the king he said from now on anyone who desires to speak with me will not be able to speak to me until he notifies the queen 152 so the holy one blessed be he in his great affection and love for the congregation of Israel who is Malchut placed everything in her jurisdiction he said all the rest are considered as nothing compared to her he said there are 60 queens my dope my undefiled is but one sure hashirim 68 to 9 what shall I do for her thus all my house will be in her hands the king made an announcement from now on all the matters of the king would be given over into the hands of the queen he placed in her hands all his weapons spears swords bows arrows knives catapults stones fortifications wood rocks and all soldiers this is what is written behold it is his litter that of Solomon sixty valiant men all girt with swords and expert in war sure hashirim 38 153 the king said from now on my wars are given over into your hand my weapons and my soldiers shall be in your hand and from now on you will guard me it is written he who keeps Israel Tehillim 1213 which is Zeir and called Israel from now on whoever needs me will not be able to talk to me until he notifies the queen this is what is written thus lit with such Aaron come into the holy place Vayikra 163 and Zot this fem is Malchut the representative of the king and everything as we have established so we find that everything is in her hands this is the honor of the queen this is what is written and the angel Elohim moved Shemot 1419 as we have learned 154 and went behind them but he asks what is the reason he went behind them he answers it was in order that warriors catapulter spearsmen and swordsmen should be positioned in front of them so that they should be visible in front of them because other camps were coming from above to do battle against Israel therefore he went behind them in order to give room for the men of war of Israel's side to fight with them 155 we learned at that time the reigning minister who was appointed over Egypt came and gathered 600 chariots of persecutors with 600 appointed ruling prosecuting officers on every single chariot this is what is written and he took 600 chosen chariots Shemot 147 he asks were not the 600 chosen chariots the chariots of Egypt for what reason does it say afterwards and all the chariots of Egypt he answers we learned that's a male Loaned 600 prosecuting chariots to help the patron angel of Egypt. This is what is written, and he took 600 chosen chariots that were not of Egypt. 156. When did the Holy One blessed be he repay Samael? It was during the wars of Caesar that the Holy One blessed be he uprooted all these chariots and they were given over to the hands of the queen. This is what is written. The waters of Kishon swept them away. That ancient brook showed them 521. In the days to come, they will all be handed over, as is written. Who is this that comes from Edom with crimson garments from Batsra? Yeshea 631. Therefore he went behind them, meaning that the Sheshana shall uproot them from the world in the end of the days. 157. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face. Shemot 1419. He asked, What is this pillar of cloud? Rabbi Yossi said, This is the cloud that always appears with the Sheshana, who is the angel
159. The passage and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them means that he moved from the side of Chesed and joined the side of Bura, because Chesed is front and Bura is back, because the time had come to become tired with judgment. Section 14 and moved and it came in stretched out. Rabbi Abba tells us that at that moment the moon Maljut became tired on one side with the crowns of supernal Chesed on the left side by. The spears of Bura and on the third side by a purple garment called Tiferet. The number 72 is used repeatedly for emphasis and to draw together the various concepts. The 72 crowns in each of the three columns are combined in Maljut and the Holy Name ascends from them, which is the secret of the chariot. Rabbi Abba explains how the 72 letters are written and arranged. We learned that the Holy One blessed be he is perfect because he encompasses the left side and the right side, and we must never forget. That judgment is part of his concealed nature so we must be careful not to incur it. Rabbi Yitzhak returns to the time when Israel were trapped on the seashore with the enemy behind and the sea in front and says that their prayers and cries to God awakened the collective light of above and the sea executed the supernal laws. Rabbi Shimon adds that when the world needs mercy the Holy One blessed be he takes pity and listens 160 come and behold at that moment the moon became full which is Malchut of all the aspects and she inherited 72 holy names on three sides namely three columns on one side Malchut was attired with the crowns of the supernal she said with 70 engravings of the light of supernal Abba illuminating her which is the secret of moved 161 on the second side Malchut was attired with the spears of Bura meaning the judgments in her by 60 lashes of fire and 10 lashes of her own that descended from the side of supernal Ima and said judgments and this is the Secret of the left column and the passage and it came 162 on the third side Malchud was attired in a purple garment that the supernal king called Tiferet wore and which the holy son who is Tiferet inherited with the 70 supernal crowns from the side of Abba and Ima he includes both sides namely the right which is Chesed and the left which is Bura which is the secret of stretched out 163 there are two crowns from the side of Abba and Ima which are I and that 72 names we learned that there are 70 from the side of Chesed plus two witnesses from the side of Bura there are 70 plus two scribes from the side of Tiferet there are 70 plus two colors for glorification 164 in this place namely Malchud they are engraved one in the other so that the 72 crowns in every column are combined with each other and the holy name emerges from them which is the secret of the chariot for they become I and that 72 names each one consisting of three letters here the Patriarchs are engraved which are Chesed, Bura and Tiferet the three columns to be joined together thus is the holy name I and that engraved with its letters 165 the combination of these letters are as follows the first set of letters namely the 72 letters in the passage and the angel move are written in their order in a straightforward manner because straight is an indication of Chesed and all the original letters are in Chesed namely in the right column to follow a straightforward manner in the proper order 166 the second set of letters namely the 72 letters in the passage and it came are written backwards meaning they are written from below upwards as written further in the second diagram all the second 72 letters pertain to Bura so as to reveal judgments and weapons that come from the left side and when they are in reverse order they allude to judgments 167 the third set of letters namely the 72 letters in the passage and Moses stretched out our letters that are written so as to expose the colors which are the judgments with which to adorn the holy king which is the secret of the 72 colors of glorification they all join and are bound to him because he is the central column and he glorifies in his crowns in a straightforward manner and makes an imprint on the side and the other side namely to the right column and to the left column as he establishes the illumination of both of them as a king who is adorned with everything 168 years mark the holy name engraved with 72 letters that is three times 72 letters in each of the three columns combine and join together and they form 72 words each word contains three letters from the three columns that are adorned with the patriarchs namely Chesed, Bura and Tiferet which are the supernal holy chariot he asks why is the third group of letters not written in two ways part of them straightforward and part of them in reverse in order to be equal to both sides meaning to the right Column and to the left column since it sustains the illumination of both because we learned that you have established equity. Tehillim 994 means that the Holy One blessed be he establishes equity and sustains on both sides. It is written in the middle bar in the midst of the board. Shema 2628 which is the Holy One blessed be he namely the central column that sustains the two sides. If so it should have been written half straight like the right column and half in reverse order like the left column. Rabbi Yitzhak said this is Jacob and it is all one because Jacob also indicates the central column 169. He answers this is similar to a king who is perfect in everything and his mind is wholesome. What is the custom of that king? His face always shines like the sun because he is perfect and when he judges he judges for good and for bad. Therefore it is necessary to be guarded from him. He who is stupid sees the shining laughing face of the king and does not guard himself from him. But even though he sees the face of the king shining the wise man says the king is surely perfect and complete in everything his mind is whole yet I see that in that shine there sits judgment but it is concealed even though it is not visible because otherwise the king would not be perfect it is necessary to be cautious 170 so it is with the holy one blessed be he is always perfect in this manner and that manner meaning in the right side and in the left side but he only appears with a shining face therefore these wicked fools are not cautious with him but the righteous wise men say the king is perfect and even though his face appears shining judgment is concealed in it therefore it is necessary to be cautious with him 171 Rabbi Yehuda said from here we can answer the question of why the 72 letters of the central column were not written half forward and half in reverse for it is written for I am the Hashem I do not change Malachi 36 which means I did not move to a different place even though the two columns are included in me still in all I did not change myself because of this to jump to the left aspect rather I remained in the right aspect because everything is included in me and these two colors white and red are included in me namely in my chest the illumination of the left is not visible in me but in Malchut therefore all the letters that are in the central column appear in a straight way even though the letters are attached to both sides namely to the right and left still in all they are written in their order in a straightforward way 172 and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went from before their faces and stood behind them Shemot 1419 to 20 until this point is one side she said to Abraham the right column Rabbi Shimon said Eliezer my son come and behold the secret when Atika Kaddish is shown upon the king who is Zeir and he illuminated on him and Crowned him with the supernal holy crowns which are the light of Chesedim of supernal Abba and Ima the first three Sfarot when Chesedim reached him the patriarchs who were the three columns Chesed, Bura and Tiferet were adorned and there was complete perfection then the queen went on her journeys with that perfection of the patriarchs and when she becomes adorned with them all the three patriarchs that are three columns then she is joined and has authority over everything 173 similarly. The holy name is engraved with the letters that are imprinted on the supernal chariot for they are the adornment of the patriarchs 174 Rabbi Isa said we found the secret in the blowing of the shofar of Rabbi Hamnon Isaba the elder three times thus 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 that is in thus instilled of you thus spread of you and thus give glory but it does not accept thus shall the righteous they correspond to these three passages and the angel moved and it came and Moses. Stretched out this is the order 3 and no more Rabbi Yossi said everything is included and concealed in the holy name meaning that all three columns of the name of I and Bet 72 are included in Malchut so we find that the perfection of the holy chariot is in Malchut therefore there are four times 72 the three columns Chesed, Bura and Tiferet and Malchut therefore thus is also four times meaning that he mentions also thus shall the righteous 175 Rabbi Shimon said this is the holy name the adornment of the patriarchs who are Chesed, Bura and Tiferet for they become adorned in their engraving when they join together they are the perfection of the holy chariot which is included in 48 words and is the perfection of everything and the mainstay of the roots 176 come and behold the trunk of the tree is the name Allah Nunya that is found in the middle of the 72 names namely the 37th name the top of all the branches of the tree is the name Bob Habob, which is the first Name of the 72 names the friends have already observed that
Column 177 corresponding to these, Chisit Vira and Tiferet in the three columns of the name Ayin Bet 72, is Holy 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 is Hashem Tzvoti Yishayah 63 Holy above in Shach and Dad Holy in the center in Chisit Vira and Tiferet and Holy below in Netzach and Yizit and so the first Holy is Chisit the second Holy is Vira and the third Holy is Tiferet, that is as was written before that Chisit Vira and Tiferet are the secret of Shach Babana Dad Chisit. Vira and Tiferet and Netzach and Yizit they are all engraved in as explained blessed is he blessed is his name forever and ever Amen 178 Rabbi Yitzhak said at the time that Yisrael camped by the sea they saw many multitudes many soldiers and many camps above and below they all came and gathered against Yisrael who started to pray from their anguish 179 at that moment Yisrael saw trouble on all sides of sea with its towering waves was in front of them all these multitudes and all the camps of Egypt were behind them and above there were many prosecutors against them they started to cry to the Holy One blessed be he 180 then it is written and Hashem said to Moses why do you cry to me Shemot 1415 we learned in the hidden book that to me is exact for it is the attribute of Zeir and because it all depends upon Atika at that moment Atika Kadisha was revealed goodwill was present in all the worlds above and then the collective light shown 181 Rabbi. It's Hawk said then when everything shown together the sea executed the supernal laws namely the commandment to drown the Egyptians and save Israel, because those above and those below were given over to it therefore we say that administering children longevity and sustenance are as difficult before the Holy One blessed be he as the splitting of the Red Sea and everybody says this what is the reason because splitting the sea depends on Atika as written in the former paragraph 182 Rabbi. Shimon said there is one dear on earth and the Holy One blessed be he does much for her when she cries the Holy One blessed be he hearkens to her distress and listens to her voice and when the world needs mercy in relation to water she utters voice and the Holy One blessed be he hearkens to her voice and the Holy One blessed be he has pity on the world as is written as the heart pants after the water brooks Tehillim 422 183 when she needs to give birth she is stopped from all sides she places her head between her knees cries and screams and the Holy One blessed be he has pity on her he sends a snake that bites her genitals and opens her and tears that place for her and she gives birth immediately Rabbi Shimon said in this matter do not question and do not test Hashem for this exactly so 184 thus Hashem saved Israel that day and Israel saw Egypt dead Shemot 1430 the Holy One blessed be he showed them the minister appointed over Egypt who he had passed through the river. A fire that was on the shore of the upper sea which is Malchut dead what is the reason that he died as there is no death among angels it is as we have established that he was removed from his dominion and it was considered for him as death section 15 and Israel saw that great work Rabbi she opens with and the children of Israel saw that great work lit hand we read of the meaning of the five fingers of each hand and the miracles that the Holy One Blessed be he does with them it was the miracles at the Red Sea that led Israel and the Pharaoh to full belief in Hashem until then the Pharaoh had hardened his heart against Hashem we read that the righteous are often snared in the sins of the wicked as were the Egyptians who had not oppressed the children of Israel but were nonetheless slain when Israel was sent into exile in Egypt the Holy One blessed be he gave them constant reassurance to counter their fear at the time they were delivered from Egypt all the patriarchs gathered to see the promises that he had made to them fulfilled for the sake of the covenants that he had made with them Rabbi Abba says that there is a world above and a world below from the lower world the judgments upon the lower beings are aroused the Holy One blessed be he performs miracles for his people in this lower world and it was thus that the Egyptians sank into the sea 185 and Israel saw that great work lit hand Shemot 1431 Rabbi Shia. Said here with the great hand was the left hand completed which is Vira and all the fingers Chisit Vira Tiferet Netzach and Hod, that are in IT and the left hand is completed by reason of it being included in the right for we have learned that everything is included in the right and depends on the right this is what is meant by your right hand Hashem is glorious in power your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces Shemot 156 even though this pertains to Vira since it depends. On the right hand it is therefore called after IT 186 and Rabbi Yitzhak said we did not find one who hardened his heart towards the Holy One blessed be he like Pharaoh Rabbi Yossi said but Sikhan and Ak also hardened their hearts he said to him it is not so they hardened their hearts against Israel but they did not harden their hearts against the Holy One blessed be he as Pharaoh hardened his spirit against him for he saw his mighty acts yet did not repent 187 Rabbi Yehuda said in. The name of Rabbi Yitzhak Pharaoh was wiser than all his sorcerers and he gazed into all these crowns and all the knowledge of the other side he did not see redemption for Israel in their entire side and it was not dependent on any of their crowns for in all the supernal powers of the other side they found a bond against Israel that they would not be able to emerge from under this control Pharaoh did not think that there was another bond of faith that dominated all the powers of the other side therefore he hardened his heart 188 Rabbi Abba said it was not Pharaoh who strengthened his heart but this name Yudi Havah because when Moses said thus says Hashem the very word namely Yudi Havah hardened his heart as is written and Hashem hardened the heart of Pharaoh Shemot 912 in all his wisdom he did not find that this name should dominate in the world and therefore he said who is Hashem Shemot 52 when he thought of repenting afterwards he said Hashem is righteous. Shemot 927 Rabbi Yossi said afterwards he said I have sinned against Hashem Shemot 1016 with the same mouth that said who is Hashem 189 Rabbi Shizkiah opened the discussion saying therefore I said it is all one he destroys the innocent and the wicked Eof 922 this passage was interpreted in the secret of wisdom what is it is all one he answers it is written my dove my undefiled is but one she is the only one of her mother Sure Hashirim 69 she being malchute and with this does the Holy One blessed be he execute his judgments below and execute his judgments above in everything 190 when the Holy One blessed be he arouses his judgments he executes his judgments with this crown which is malchute then it is written he destroys the innocent and the wicked because the righteous are snared in the sins of the wicked as is written and said to the angel that destroyed the people it is enough Hebrew 2 Shmuel 2416 which means take the greatest Hebrew among them. Therefore Job said he destroys the innocent and the wicked but he did not explain that it meant the righteous who were snared in the sins of the wicked Rabbi Yisa said it is all one refers to the congregation of Israel in exile in Egypt and for her the Holy One blessed be he slew the Egyptians and took vengeance among them this is what is meant by the verse he destroys the innocent and the wicked for there were also innocents present there who did not enslave Israel and were slain. Together with the wicked among them 191 Rabbi Shia said Job was not stricken until the time that Israel went out of Egypt Job said if so then all people are equal he destroys the innocent and the wicked Pharaoh oppressed Israel and said who is Hashem that I should obey his voice I did not oppress them and I did nothing but he destroys the innocent and the wicked he who feared the word of Hashem among the servants of Pharaoh Shemot 920 refers to Job because he was present at the time of the exodus from Egypt 192 Rabbi Yehuda said the hailstones that were falling on the Egyptians and were stopped by Moses wreaked vengeance later on in the days of Joshua and in the time to come the rest will drop on Edom and its descendants Rabbi Yossi said this is what is written as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show him marvelous things Mishnah 715 193 another explanation of and Israel saw the great hand the beginning of the verse is not related to the ending nor is the ending related to its beginning first and Israel saw and afterwards and the people feared Hashem yes and Israel saw the cause that the people feared Hashem and beforehand did they not fear Hashem but Rabbi Yehuda said that old man who went down with his children into exile and suffered the exile himself actually saw all the vengeances and all the mighty deeds that the Holy One blessed be he did against Egypt hence it is written and Israel saw it was. Actually Israel namely Jacob 194 Rabbi Yehuda also said the Holy One blessed be he raised that old man and said to him arise see your children who are going out from a strong nation arise see the mighty deeds that I did for your children in Egypt 
You opt to be buried in the tomb of your fathers bringing you up to see the deliverance of your children and the mighty deeds that I will do for them 197 on the day that Israel went out from Egypt the Holy One blessed be he raised Jacob and said to him arise and see the redemption of your children for so many years and mighty deeds did I for them Jacob was there and saw everything as it is written and Israel saw the great hand 198 Rabbi Yitzhak said from here it is understood that Jacob was present at the time of the redemption for it is written and brought you out he himself being present with his mighty power out of Egypt Devarim 437 what is the meaning of being present it refers to Jacob because he brought all patriarchs there Rabbi Shizkiah said being present lit in his face refers to Abraham as it is written and Abraham fell on his face Bear sheet 173 199 come and behold Abraham said shall a child be born to him that is a hundred years old if it 17 The Holy One blessed be he said to him I swear you will see many multitudes and many camps that have emerged from you by the time that Israel left Egypt all the tribes and all those myriads did the Holy One blessed be he bring up to Abraham who saw them this is what is written and brought you out he himself being present Rabbi Abba said all the patriarchs gathered there throughout that redemption this is what is written and brought you out he himself being present what is the meaning of in his face these are the patriarchs 200 Rabbi Lazar said and brought you out he himself being present this refers to Jacob with his power refers to Isaac mighty refers to Abraham Rabbi Shimon said for the sake of the patriarchs there always occurs a redemption for Israel as is written then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land Bayi 2642 he asks the patriarchs are worthy of being remembered but what is the meaning of and I will remember the land he answers in order to include David among them namely Malchut that is called the land who is a chariot together with the patriarchs who are Shesed, Bura and Tiferet and they always arouse redemption for the children of Israel 201 and Israel saw that great hand which Hashem did upon Egypt he asks did he do it now it was done earlier what is the great hand which Hashem did he answers a hand is not so considered if there are less than five fingers that great means that it includes five other fingers of the left hand and then it is called great because the aspect of the first three Sfirat is acquired by the right hand by being included in the left and every individual finger is of great value the holy one blessed be he performs miracles and mighty deeds with them and this way all the levels are uprooted from having continuity 202 from here we learn that with the five first fingers namely the first five plagues it is written and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened as soon as these five fingers of the left hand were completed there was nothing left under Pharaoh's jurisdiction to harden his heart and it is written and Hashem hardened the heart of Pharaoh 203 therefore and Israel saw that great hand and believed in Hashem he asked until now did they not believe in Hashem yet it is written and the people believed and they heard Shema 431 and they did see all the mighty deeds that the Holy One blessed be he performed for them in Egypt he answers but what is the meaning of and believe they believed what he said and Moses said to the people fear not stand still and see 204 Rabbi Yisus said it is written and Israel saw Egypt dead and it is written you will not see them again anymore forever Shema 1413 Rabbi Yisus said they saw them dead he said to him if it had been written you will not see them again alive I would say so Rabbi. Abba said to him you ask well 205 but come and behold it is written forever and ever live from the world and until the world I did Rahim and 1636 we learned that there is a world above and there is a world below from the world of above is the beginning of kindling the candles which is by the source of all mokin that are called candles the lower world is the culmination namely Malchut that culminates all the Sfirat and it is composed of them all and from this lower world are aroused the judgments upon the lower beings 206 the Holy One blessed be he performs miracles for Israel in this lower world and marvels occur for them when this world aroused to do miracles all the Egyptians sank in the sea through the actions of this world and a miracle occurred to Israel in this world therefore it is written you shall not see them again anymore forever live until the world meaning until that world is aroused and they are given over to its judgments as soon as they were given over to it to be judged it is written and Israel saw Egypt dead upon the seashore this is the meaning of the verse from the world and until the world until the world precisely meaning until the world of below is aroused and it is written and believed in Hashem and in Moses his servant section 16 then saying Moses Rabbi Yehuda opens with before I found you in the belly I knew you he says that the Holy One blessed be he sent down for the Children of Israel, a true prophet and a faithful shepherd who was Moses, he put a great and holy spirit into him and appointed him over all that was his. When Moses emerged into the world, the Sheshana illuminated him, and the Holy One blessed be he read over him. Before I found you in the belly, I knew you, and before you did come out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. We read various interpretations of then saying Moses and the children of Israel, Rabbi. Shimon says that it is the song of the Queen to the Holy One blessed be he. It contains the world that has passed and the world to come, and the bonds of faith and the days of King Messiah, and all the other praises of those above and below are dependent on it. Rabbi Yossi submits that this song to Hashem is the river that is binded that emerges from Eden, and lastly, Rabbi Yehuda speaks about the time that Hashem caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night, saying that all the Egyptians below and the princes above were given over into the hands of the queen for her to do vengeance on them. 207 Then sang Moses Shemot 151 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying before I formed you in the belly I knew you your may 15 blessed is the portion Israel that the Holy One blessed be he desired them more than all the other nations and for the great love that he had for them he set up for them a true prophet and a faithful shepherd and aroused over him a holy spirit more than the other faithful prophets he took him out of his own portion meaning from what Jacob had separated as a tithe of his sons to the Holy One blessed be he namely the tribe Levi since Levi was his the Holy One blessed be he received him and adorned him with many crowns and anointed him with the holy anointing oil of above and then he produced from his children the Holy Spirit into the world and girded him with his holy girdles of the great faith which is by the 208 we learned that at that moment the time had come for Moses the faithful prophet to descend to the world the Holy One blessed be he withdrew a holy spirit from a hewn block of the precious stone sapphire which is Malchut that was concealed within 248 lights and shone on him and he crowned him with 365 crowns and they stood before him and he appointed him over all that was his he gave him 173 keys and crowned him with five crowns every single crown ascended and illuminated in a thousand worlds that illuminate and in the candles that were concealed in the treasures of the supernal holy king 209 then he passed him through all the lights in the garden of Eden and brought him into his palace and passed him by his hosts and camps then they all trembled opened and said remove yourselves from his vicinity for the Holy One blessed be he has aroused a spirit to dominate and provoke the world's a voice emitted and said who is this with all these keys in his hands another voice said except him among you he is the one who will descend among the people and the Torah which is the most concealed of everything that is concealed is going to be given into his hands to shake the worlds that are above and below through him at that moment they all became excited and traveled after him they opened the discussion saying you have caused a man to ride over our heads we went through fire and through water Tehillim 6612 210 then that spirit of Moses rose and stood before the king the open mem rose and put on its crowns while he crowned the spirit with 325 crowns and deposited his keys into his hands the shin alludes to the three patriarchs who crowned him with these holy crowns deposited all the keys of the king in his hands and appointed him faithfully to be the trustee of the house the hay rose and crowned itself with its crowns and received him from the king 211 then that spirit of Moses alighted on the ships that sail in that great sea which is Malchut and Malchut accepted him in order to Raise him to the king she gave him weapons from there with which to smite Pharaoh and his whole land and on Shabbat and the first day of the month she elevates him to the king who is Zeir and then his name is expressed in these letters that we etched which are Mem Shin and Hay is written above 212 at the moment that he emerged to descend to the earth to become clothed in the body in the seat of Levi 425 candles were prepared for the king who is Zeir and 425 appointed engravings. He escorted the spirit of Moses to his place when he emerged in the world the
He answers, This is what we learned. All the miracles and all the mighty deeds that were performed for Israel happened when the light of Atika Kaddish is shown, which is Eric Enpin, with its crowns there engraved and imprinted by Aleph, so that the top YUD of the Aleph is the right column and the lower line is the left column, and the line between them is the central column that mediates the Aleph penetrates the darkness, alluding to the central line column of the Aleph that penetrates and diminishes the left column, which is darkness, into the aspect of six ends of the first three Sfirot, and IT shines to every side, meaning both with Chakma and in Jesidim, and when the light of the Aleph joins and reaches the Zayin, that Zayin weapon is the sword of Hashem is filled with blood. Yeshayah 346, namely Malchud, when it is stretched towards the left, and it performs miracles and mighty deeds because the Aleph and Zayin have joined, and this is a song, a song that illuminates to. All sides both Chakma and Jesedim and hence then have a Z Aleph Zayin sang 216 he asks then sang Lin will sing Moses should it have been written sang Moses he answers this matter is suspended until the time to come for he perfected it for that time and perfected it for the future to come for Israel will praise the song in the time to come Moses and the children of the children of Israel from here we learn that even though the early righteous men ascended to the highest levels that are above and have been bound in the bond of life they will all stand up to be resurrected in the body and recite the song this is what is written then will sing Moses and the children of Israel 217 Rabbi Shimon said hence Hashem shall again a second time stretch forth his hand to recover the remnant of his people Yeshua 1111 to recover Hebelanot has the meaning as in Hashem created me Hebkanani as the beginning of his way Mishlei 822 the remnant of his people refers to the righteous among them who are called remnants Hebshiar as is written and there remain two men in the camp Imidbar 1126 we learned why they are called remnants it is because the world exists only for the sake of those who make themselves into songs Hebshirim therefore the righteous are called remnants derived from songs 218 you may ask since they are bundled in the bond of life and delight in the supernal delight why does the holy one blessed be he lower them to the earth go and learn even from the first time the time they were born and emerged into the world when all the spirits and souls were in the highest level above the holy one blessed be he lowered them to the earth below all the more so now since the holy one blessed be he wants to straighten out that which is crooked by showing them the miracles and marvels that he will perform for the children of Israel even though they are righteous nevertheless it is written for there is no righteous man Upon the earth who does good and does not sin, Kahilat 720, and you may ask one of those who died because of the advice of the serpent who did no sin, why should they arise? He answers, even they will arise and will be advisors to the Messiah 219. Therefore we learned Moses will sing the song in the future to come. What is the reason? Because it is written as in the days of your coming out the land of Egypt, I will show him marvelous things. Misha 715, he asks, should I will show him have been said, I will show you. He answers, rather, I will show the very one who saw originally, namely Moses, for he will see a second time, and this is the meaning of I will show him. It is written, I will show him the salvation of Elohim, Tehillim 5023, and show him my salvation, Tehillim 9116, and then shall sing Moses and the children of Israel to Hashem 220. It is the song of the Queen, which is Malchut to the Holy One. Blessed be he. We learned that every person who says the song daily and has it. Proper intention merits to say it in the time to come. It contains the world that has passed, and it contains the world to come, and it contains the bonds of faith, and it contains the days of King Messiah, and all the other praises of those above and those below. Stir from it. 221. He asks, It is written, Hasherah, the song which I asked feminine, but should it not have said, Shirzay, the song in the masculine form? He answers, But this is the song with which the queen praises the king, Zeir Enpin. And that Moses said from below to above, from Malchut to Zeir Enpin, therefore it is said, Shira feminine, and it has already been explained to Hashem. She sings to Hashem because the king has welcomed her. Rabbi Yussi said, All these ointments, meaning the lights that flow, the holy king poured to her, therefore the queen praised him. 222. Rabbi Yehuda said, If so, that it is the song of the queen to the king, why is it written, Moses and the children of Israel, seeing that it is for the queen to Praise he answers blessed is the portion of Moses and Israel that they knew how to praise the king for the queen's sake in the proper manner because she inherited all her strength and might from the king 223 Rabbi she opened the discussion saying arise cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches each 219 arise cry out refers to the congregation of Israel which is Malchut in the night means the exile Rabbi Yossi says in the night refers to the time when she dominates and awakens because Malchut dominates at night in the beginning of the watches should have been written at the beginning he answers in the beginning the head is as it is written upon the bed's head bear she 4731 we have established that the head of the bed is Yezid also here the head with which the queen is blessed is Yezid head beginning of the watches is the head of Netzach and Hod which is Yezid 224 Rabbi Yossi said this is the beginning of all the crowns of the king and the end for from the aspect of the nine spirot of direct light of Zeir Enpin it is the bottom one that ends from the aspect of the nine spirot of returning light of Zeir Enpin that illuminate from below upward is it is considered the key to of returning light since it is the beginning of the spirot of returning light the Torah therefore calls it the beginning of the watches Rabbi Abba said watches is spelled without a vav which alludes to Malchut and this is Yezid which is her head and is thus called the bed's head it is all said in reference to the supernal holy king that is Zeir Enpin meaning Yezid of Zeir Enpin and this is the meaning of this song to Hashem meaning to Yezid of Zeir Enpin 225 Rabbi Yisa said this song to Hashem is the river which is Bina that emerges from Eden which is Chakma meaning Bina that emerged from the head of Eric Enpin for all the oil and greatness meaning all the mokin of male and female and Briah Yitzra and Asiya emerge from it. This is understood from the following passage which Sayah I will sing to Hashem which refers to the supernal holy king Zeir Enpin therefore it is not written I will sing to him because the previous to Hashem in this song to Hashem I and not Zeir Enpin 226 and spoke saying meaning the following generation so that this will not ever be forgotten from them anyone who is worthy of the song in this world merits it in the world to come and will be worthy of praising with it in the days of King Messiah in the rejoining of the congregation of Israel with the Holy One blessed be he it is written saying meaning saying it at that time saying it in the Holy Land in the time when Israel will be settled in the land saying it during exile saying it at the redemption of Israel saying it in the world to come 227 I will sing to Hashem he asks it should have said we will sing why does it say I will sing he answers it is because they were reciting it. Praises of the Queen as mentioned earlier and it is therefore written I will sing in the singular to Hashem refers to the Holy King who is Zeir Enpin for he has triumphed gloriously meaning that he ascended and was crowned with his crowns to bring forth blessings and strength and mighty deeds with all of which to be elevated for he has triumphed in this world gloriously in the world to come he triumphed gloriously at that time in order to be crowned afterwards with his crowns in complete joy 228 the horse and his rider he cast into the sea Shemot 151 namely the dominion of below which is the horse and the dominion of above they grasp onto which is his rider both of them were given over to that great sea and the great dominion to take revenge on them and we learn the Holy One blessed be he does not execute judgment below until he does so with their government above this is the meaning Hashem will punish the host of the high ones on high and the kings of it. Earth upon the earth, Yeshayah 2421 229, he cast into the sea. Rabbi Yehuda said that night a mighty power was awakened, as is written, and Hashem caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Shemot 1421, at that time the queen requested of the king that all the multitudes of the Egyptians below and all the princes above be given over into her hands. They were all given over into her power to do vengeance with them, as it is written, the horse and its rider he cast into the sea here into the sea. I written without adjectives, alluding both to the sea above and the sea below. Section 17, I is my strength and song. Rabbi, she reminds us that the Holy One, blessed be, he created the world and created man to dominate everything in the world. He brought him into the garden so that he should have joy. He commanded him not to eat of one tree, but man did not obey. If Adam had observed the commandment, he could have lived forever and stayed there. In the garden forever he knew the
and you placed your hand on me. Tehillim 1395 How much must a person honor the Holy One? Blessed be he because when he created the world he saw that man would dominate everything and he was similar to those above and those below. He lowered him to the world in a glorious form and the creatures saw him gathered and bowed before him and fear and terror fell upon them because of the fear of him. This is the meaning of and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. And upon every bird of the air, bear sheet 92, 231, he brought him into the garden that he planted to guard it, and so that he should have joy upon joy and delight in it, he made for him a canopy covered with precious stones, and the supernal angels used to rejoice before him afterwards. He commanded him not to eat of one tree, but he did not eat the commandment of his master. 232, I found in the book of Enoch that after the Holy One blessed be he elevated Enoch and showed him all the treasures of the king those above and those below. He showed him the tree of life and the tree that Adam was cautioned against, and he showed him the place of Adam in the garden of Eden, and he saw that if Adam had observed this commandment of the tree of knowledge, he could have lived forever and always been there. He did not observe the commandment of his master, so he was judged and punished. 233, Rabbi Itzhak said Adam was created with two faces, and this was the way they explained it, and he Took one of his sides, bear she 221, the Holy One, blessed be he has sown it, and it became two from the east and from the west, Adam from the east and he from the west, this is what is written, you have beset me behind and before behind is west and before is east, 234, Rabbi she has said, what did the Holy One, blessed be he do, he prepared that female perfected her beauty and brought her to Adam, this is what is written, and of the side which Hashem Elohim has taken from the man he made a woman of 22, come and behold, it is written above, and he took one of his sides, what is one, it is as in my dove, my undefiled is but one, she is the only one of her mother, sure Hashering 69, which is Malchut of his sides, meaning from his sides, as is written, and for the second side of the tabernacle, Shema 2620, because she was taken from the left side, 235, Rabbi Yehuda said, the Holy One, blessed be he placed a supernal soul in Adam and included in it wisdom and understanding to know. Everything he asks from which place did he give him a soul? Rabbi Yitzhak said from the place the other souls come from, namely Bina, for the light of Bina is called Neshama 236. Rabbi Yehuda said we understand it from here as it is written, let the earth bring forth living creatures, live Nefesh, Bereshit 124. He asks from which place in the earth he answers from the place where the temple is located because earth is Malchut and the place of the temple is Bina that is in it living. Soul had Nefesh is simply written living soul without explaining who soul and he says this is the Nefesh of Adam who was first of all 237. Rabbi Yitzhak said Adam knew supernal wisdom more than the supernal angels and he gazed into everything and knew and recognized his master more than all the inhabitants of the world after he sinned the wellsprings of wisdom became stopped for him it is written and Hashem Elohim sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground, Bereshit 323. 238 Rabbi Abba said Adam emerged from male and female namely Zeir and Ben and Mukba this is what is written and Elohim said let us make man in our image after our likeness Bereshit 126 therefore even by man male and female were made united and were separated from each other afterwards you may question why it says the earth from where he was taken and not from the supernal male and female he answers it is certainly so that he was taken from the earth but this refers to the Mukba of Zeir and Ben and the Holy One blessed be he meaning Zeir and Ben was her partner these are the male and female that we mentioned and it is all one thing 239 Rabbi Yossi said Yah is my strength and song refers to those that are included one with the other and do not separate one from the other they are always in love with one desire for they are Abba and I am a that are called Yudi from them spring the currents of the rivers and springs to supply everyone and to bless everything and the waters of these springs do not fail, this is the meaning of, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not, Yeshua 5811, therefore he is become by salvation, Shemot 152, for this reason does the holy king draw and cause to inherit below, and the right becomes aroused to perform miracles, 240, he is my El, and I will glorify him, this is the righteous, namely is it from whom emerge blessings in unity, and I will glorify him in that place where there is love, which is the temple Elohim of my father, and I will exalt him, if Moses said this to the place from which the love is come, namely the left side, therefore once Moses said about that side, and I will exalt him, there is complete perfection in it, because, and I will exalt him, means that he causes it to be comprised in the right side, this being the entire perfection, 241, Rabbi Yitzhak said, and he is become by salvation, this is the holy king who is Zeir and, ben, and so he is, how do we know this, I have found this in another passage. In which it is written, Yah is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. It is understood from Hashim is become my salvation that it refers to the Holy King who is called Yudi Hey Bapay, namely Zeir and Pen 242. Yah is my strength and my song. Rabbi Shishkiah opened the discussion with the verse A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Mishlei 1717. A friend loves at all times refers to the Holy One, blessed be he of whom it is written, Do not forsake your own friend and your father's friend. Mishlei 2710 243. And a brother is born for adversity at the time that your enemy oppresses you. What does the Holy One, blessed be he, say? For the sake of my brethren and my comrades, I will now say, Peace be within you. Tehillim 1228. Israel are called brothers and comrades of the Holy One, blessed be he. What is the meaning of his born? Is he born now in time of trouble? He answers during the trouble shall be born in the world one who will be a Brother to you to save you from all those who oppress you. 244 Rabbi Yehuda said is born means that the Holy King will be aroused with the strength to take revenge on the nations because of you and to nurture you from IMA which is by on this left side as is written Yah is my strength and song and he has become my salvation he will awaken powers against the idolatrous nations. 245 Rabbi Yisa opened the discussion saying how much must a person love the Holy One blessed be he for. There is no service before the Holy One blessed be he except love the Holy One blessed be he calls beloved everyone who loves him and serves him with love he asks if so how is it possible to reconcile these two passages do not forsake your own friend and your father's friend Mishlei 2710 and let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's also friend's house Mishlei 2517 246 he answers but the scholars have already explained that this passage do not forsake your own friend and your Father's friend is written in reference to burnt offerings but in reference to sin offerings and guilt offerings it is said let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house now we will explain do not forsake your own friend and your father's friend do not forsake serving him and cleaving unto him and doing his commandments do not forsake indeed and let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house means let your inclination be seldom there so that it would not provoke you or dominate you and so that no strange thought will rise from your neighbor's house what is your neighbor's house it is the holy soul that your friend placed in you and put inside you 247 therefore the service of the holy one blessed be he is to love him and everything he may do to you as is written and you shall love Hashem your Elohim Devarim 65 this is my El and I will glorify him for all of Israel saw it to see what Ezekiel the prophet did not see even embryos in their mother's womb saw and praise the Holy One, blessed be he, and they all said, This is my El, and I will glorify him, Elohim of my father, and I will exalt him, Elohim of my father, is as is written, Elohim of Abraham, 248, Rabbi Yossi said, If so, why does it say, and I will exalt him, seeing that Elohim of Abraham is above, and there is no need to exalt him, it means that Elohim of Isaac, who is the left column, needs to be exalted, not the right column, he said to him, even so, it is needed to exalt him, and it all pertains to the same issue, and I will exalt him on all sides, also one who knows how to proclaim the oneness of the Holy and Great Name must exalt him, for this is the loftiest service of the Holy One, blessed be he, 249, Rabbi Yehuda was sitting before Rabbi Shimon, and reading it is written, The voice of your watchman is heard, they lift up the voice together, shall they sing, Yeshua 528, the voice of your watchman, who are the watchman, he answers those who are waiting for the time when it Holy One, blessed be he, will have mercy to build his house. They lift up the voice he asks it should have said. They will lift up the voice. What is the meaning of they lift up the voice? He answers every person who weeps and raises his voice for the destruction of the house
would unite with the other and that is the meaning of when Hashem returns Zion and not to Zion because Hashem Zion indicates a union of Hashem with Zion and Yisrael will say this is Israel and I will glorify him and this is Hashem we have waited for him we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation Yeshayah 259 in his salvation assumedly namely in the redemption of Hashem when he returns to Zion section 18 Hashem is a man of war Rabbi Shimon says that the book of the wars of Hashem means the wars of Torah which are peace and love rather than quarrels and destruction and he turns to seek out the book of Hashem and read saying that all the powers and strengths that the Holy One blessed be he has are dependent on that book that is malchut and emerge from there when his powers and wars are provoked the judgments of the right side and the judgments of the left side arouse mighty deeds then Hashem is a man of war 251 Hashem is a man of war Hashem is his name. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying, Wherefore is said in the book of the wars of Hashem, Behavin Sifa and the Wadis of Arnon, Bimidbar 2114. How much must we observe on the words of Torah? How much must we concentrate on every word? For you have not one word in the Torah that does not allude to the Holy Supernal Name, and there is no word in the Torah that does not have many secrets, many senses, many sources, and many branches. 252. Here we should observe what is written. Wherefore is said in the book of the wars of Hashem, He asks, Where is the book of the wars of Hashem? He answers, This is what the friends explained. Every person who wages war in Torah merits an increase in peace. At the end of his words, all the wars of the world are quarrels and destruction, and all the wars of Torah are peace and love. This is what is meant by Wherefore is said in the book of the wars of Hashem, namely the wars of Torah, Behavin Sifa, meaning love, Hebe, Hebe, at its end, Hebe. Sifa for you have no other love and peace except this 253 but the question remains standing for it is written wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of Hashem and if it refers to the wars in Torah it should have said in the Torah of the wars of Hashem what is the meaning of in the book he answers it is a supernal secret the Holy One blessed be he has a place which is called book which is Malchut as is written seek out of the book of Hashem and read Yeshayah 3416 all the powers and strengths that the Holy One blessed be he has originate from that book and from there they emerge 254 Behav in Sifa he asks what is Behav he answers all the strengths and all these mighty deeds that the Holy One blessed be he has come from that book which is Malchut when the Holy One blessed be he wages his wars it is in one place which is the end of the levels called Behav as is written the leech has two daughters crying give give Hebe Jabe Mishle 3015 they are the Place of punishments underneath Malchut in Sufa means that it is at the end Hebsaf of the level Sufa is called the Red Hebsuf Sea Malchut meaning the sea that is the end of all the levels 255 and the Wadis of Arnon means with the rivers that come and are drawn to Malchut which is the secret of Behav in Sufa from that highest place which is called Arnon what is Arnon it is the supernal union of love that never separates which is the union of the supernal Abba and Ima as you say and a river went out of Eden Beersheet 210 a river which is Bud and Eden which is Chakma are collectively called Abba and Ima because Arnon is composed of the letters of Ornon the light of 50 namely the light of the 50 gates of Bud of this way its roots are rooted and its branches of Malchut grow so as to do battles in every place perform deeds of strength and might and show the greatest dominion and majesty 256 come and behold when the powers and wars of the Holy One Blessed be he or provoked many prosecutors of judgments are stirred on every side and spears which are the secret of judgments of the right side and sharp swords which are the judgments of the left side arouse mighty deeds of sea becomes agitated and its waves rise and fall and the ships that tread and sail on the sea scatter to all sides the war escalates with catapult stone spearsmen and swordsmen then it is written your arrows are sharp talim 456 and the holy one blessed be he strengthens himself with his powers to wage war woe to those against whom the holy king provokes war it is then written Hashem is a man of war Shemot 153 257 from this passage Hashem is a man of war from these letters and from this passage emerge lines of warriors against these wicked people and these enemies who sinned against the holy one blessed be he the secret of the letters is revealed to these men of truth these things are explained and elucidated and we have already learned this 258 Hashem is a man of war Hashem is his name he asks since it is written Hashem is a man of war do I not know that Hashem is his name he answers but it is written and Hashem rained upon some and upon Imora brimstone and fire from Hashem out of heaven Beersheet 1124 in which and Hashem means Yud Hei and his court of justice which is Malchut therefore it says afterwards from Hashem here to Hashem is a man of war means Yud Hei and Hashem is his name means Malchut for all comes from that book which is Malchut as is written the heaven will reveal his iniquity Eo 2027 meaning Zeir and been called heaven and the earth shall rise up against him means Malchut that is called earth section 19 the chariots of Pharaoh and his host we are told that in the time to come the Holy One blessed be he will wage a great and powerful war against the nations in order to honor his name Rabbi Yehud narrates a dialogue between God and the angel who was appointed over the sea wherein we learned that when he created the sea it was on condition that it would split for the children of Israel Rabbi Lazar says that all the chariots and hosts above were given into the hands of judgment of Malchut called the great sea to break them in their level when they were broken and those below were broken and lost in the sea he returns to the subject of the ten fingers of the hands corresponding to the ten saying with which the Holy One blessed be he was afterwards named Rabbi Lazar says that all the ten plagues that he caused in Egypt were all by one hand because the left hand was included in the right now Rabbi Yitzhak begins to describe the seven firmaments created by God in Egypt which stars are stationed and fly above them all is a rabbit the seventh heaven above a rabbit is the firmament of the four holy beasts that are comparable to all those that are below them he talks of the seven depths and the seven Sanctuaries then of the sea that is Malchut where all the fish swim and gather and descend illuminating downward all the chariots are called by their name the dominion of the other side is broken by the strong power of Hashem at the splitting of the sea 259 come and behold all the time that the Holy One blessed be he arouses war in the world those above and those below namely the nation below and their patrons above are dislodged from their places as we have established this is the meaning of the verse the chariots of Pharaoh and his host has he thrown into the sea Shemot 154 and in the time to come the Holy One blessed be he shall wage a great and powerful war against the nations in order to glorify his name as is written and Hashem shall go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights in the day of battle Zechariah 143 and thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will make myself known Yeshiskel 3823 260 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion Saying the water saw you Elohim the water saw you they were afraid Tehillim 7717 at the time that Israel crossed the sea the Holy One blessed be he said to the angel who was appointed over the sea divide your waters he asked him why he said to him in order that my children may cross through you he said to him breaking the yoke of the reckoning is true meaning forgiveness of sins is true because the Holy One blessed be he indeed forgives and pardons sins but what is the difference between the two if you forgive the children of Israel then also forgive the Egyptians 261 the Holy One blessed be he said to him it was on this condition that I made the sea when I created the world meaning the condition that it would be split for the children of Israel what did the Holy One blessed be he do he roused his might and the waters folded this is what is meant by the water saw you Elohim the water saw you they were afraid the Holy One blessed be he said to the patron Angel of the sea slay all these multitudes and afterwards cast them out afterwards the sea covered them as is written the chariots of Pharaoh and his host has he thrown into the sea 262 Rabbi Lazar said come and behold the Holy One blessed be he made above many chariots many multitudes and many hosts which are all tied to each other they are all chariots to each other for every lower is a chariot to that which is above it there are levels upon levels and from the left side dominating chariots are come that are not holy and they are all specific levels above 263 we have already noted by the firstborn of Pharaoh that is one level that the Holy One blessed be he slew and broke loose from its strong chain under its domination were many chariots and many hosts of mighty men of the left side some of them were attached to the highest place of their dominion and some of them were attached to Malchut above and some of them were attached under the four living creatures as we Already learned 264 
one hand because the left hand was included in the right and ten fingers were included in each other corresponding to the ten sayings with which the Holy One blessed be he was afterwards named corresponding to them all the one of the sea was strong and great and dominating as is said and afterward lit the last one he afflicted her more Yashai 823 this is what is meant by the chariots of Pharaoh and his host has he thrown into the sea in the time to come the Holy One blessed be he shall slay multitudes and different officers and leaders of Edom this is what is said who is this who comes from Edom with crimson garments from Batsra Yashai 631 267 the chariots of Pharaoh and his host has he thrown into the sea Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying when his voice resounds with the great mass of water in the heavens and he raises vapors from the ends of the earth when he makes lightning flashes among the rain and brings forth the wind out of his storehouses. Yermeo 1013 We have learned that the Holy One blessed be he made seven firmaments corresponding to Chesed, Bure, Typhoret, Netzach, Hadyazet, and Malchut, and stars are stationed in every firmament meaning from the aspect of and returned Yashiskal 114 stars fly in every single firmament meaning levels from the aspect of Ranabit and above all of them is a rabbit which is the first three Sfirat of the firmaments 268 and every firmament is 200 years walk in length and 500 years high between each firmament is a distance of 500 years and a rabbit is 1500 years walk in length and 1500 years wide and all these firmaments are illuminated from its radiance 269 we have learned that above a rabbit is the firmament of the living creatures where there are four living creatures lion ox eagle and man the hoofs of the living creatures and their height resemble all of those that are under them because the upper one contains within it all that is below it above them are the Ankles of living creatures and they resemble all of those that are below them. The shanks of the living creatures resemble all of those that are below the thighs of the living creatures resemble all of those that are below the buttocks of the living creatures resemble all of those that are below and the torsos of the living creatures resemble all of those that are below the wings resemble all of those that are below their necks resemble all of those that are below the heads of the living creatures resemble all of those that are below. He enumerates here ten aspects corresponding to ten fire. He asks what is the meaning of resemble all of those and he answers they are considered comparable to all those that are below them. Two hundred and seventy. Every single limb in the living creatures corresponds to the seven depths. It corresponds to seven sanctuaries which are the secret of the seven malchuit and corresponds to from the earth to the firmament which is yes, it corresponds to from the Firmament to the firmament which are Chesed, Bure, Netzach, and Hot as mentioned their measure and height is 25,000 parts of the measure of the Holy One. Blessed be he as we have established 271 there is one more firmament above the horns of the living creatures as is written and over the heads of beasts there was the likeness of the firmament. Yashiskal 122 below that firmament are many chariots on the right and left 272 below the sea which is Malchut dwell all the fish of the sea they swim and gather in their four corners which are Chesed, Bure, Typhoret, and Malchut and descend in their level meaning they illuminate from above downwards and all the chariots are called by their name below these go the small ones levels upon levels as is written so is this great and wide sea wherein are creeping things innumerable both small and great beasts. Tehillim 10,425 we have already established these things 273 in the lower left side there is the dominion of the other side for Elohim has made the one as well as the other. Kahilat 714 and to everything that is in Briya Yitzra Isiyah of holiness there is a corresponding one in the other side and they grasp onto those above for the nurture from holiness and now at the splitting of the sea of Suf they descend broken by the strong power of holiness as we have established the chariots of Pharaoh and his hosts section 20 your right hand Hashem is glorious in power Rabbi Shimon speaking of the dough that is Malchut says that a person who studies Torah at midnight comes with the dough to stand before the king and when morning comes a thread of grace is drawn over him as he gazes at the firmament the light of understanding of the holy knowledge dwells upon him and he is crowned with it he says Hashem is near to all those who call upon him to all those who call upon him in truth which means that he knows how to proclaim the unity of the holy name in his prayers properly and thus establishes a single nation in the world everyone who comes to pray without concentrating with his heart desire and fear is cast away rabbi shimon talks about the righteous parishes or the righteous lost telling us that the righteous lost since blessings no longer dwell on him as they once did and since the children of israel malchud has become distanced from him in the time to come his spouse will be returned to him man is really divided in order that he should later accept his spouse and the two should truly become one body rabbi shimon compares this to your right hand which is divided in order to accept the left in the time to come in the time of messiah he says your right hand hashem has dashed lit will dash the enemy in pieces then will be armageddon and also the resurrection of the dead rabbi shimon says that at that time those who will remain in the world those who are circumcised and receive the holy covenant shall be blessed rabbi shia concludes that the Pleasantness that sent forth light when God gave the Torah to Israel has been covered and concealed since the holy temple was destroyed. 274 Your right hand Hashem is glorious in power. Shema 156 Rabbi Shimon said at the time when the morning shines which is the secret of the light of Chesedim of Zeir and the dough which is Malchut stands firm she is filled from her aspect because the left which is her side is then attired in Chesedim and her light becomes full she enters into two. Hundred sanctuaries of the king which is the secret of the right column which contains only Keter and Chakma each one numbers 100 thus they are 200 after Malchut has been completed and filled from the left column she is entirely included in the right which is the secret of the 200 sanctuaries a person who has studied Torah at midnight at the time that the north wind stirs namely the left and it is the desire of this dough to be aroused in the world to bestow plenty. He comes with her to stand before the king and during the time of morning light a thread of grace is drawn over him 275 as he gazes at the firmament meaning that he receives from the firmament which is Yezid of Zeir and the light of understanding of the holy knowledge dwells upon him and the man is crowned with it by attaining the first three Sfirat and all fear him and this person is called a son of the holy one blessed be he a resident of the king's sanctuary which is Malchut meaning a son to Zeir and and Mukba and he enters all the gates of the king and nobody can hinder him 276 at the time that he is summoned to the king's sanctuary it is written about him Hashem is near to all those who call upon him to all those who call upon him in truth Tehillim 14518 what is in truth it is as we established in the passage show truth to Jacob Misha 720 which means that he knows how to proclaim the unity of the holy name in his prayers properly and this is it. Service of the Holy King 277 Anyone who knows how to proclaim the unity of the Holy Name properly establishes a single nation in the world as written and what one nation in the earth is like your people like Israel 2 Shmuel 723 Therefore we have established that the service of any priest who does not know how to proclaim the unity of the Holy Name properly is not a proper service this is because everything depends upon the priest both the service above which is the establishing of unity of the name and the service below of sacrifices and he must concentrate his heart and desire so that those above and those below are blessed 278 It is written when you come to appear before me let's see my face Yeshua 112 for the prayer of every person who comes to proclaim the unity of the Holy Name but does not concentrate with his heart desire and fear in order that by it those above and those below shall be blessed is cast away all announced against him and the Holy One. Blessed be he declares of him when you come to see my face 279 it should have been simply when you come to see why the additional to see my face he answers for all these faces of king namely the illumination of Chakma in the secret of the passage a man's wisdom makes his face to shine Kahilat 81 are concealed in the depth of the darkness which is the secret of the judgments in the left column for by all those who know how to proclaim the unity of the holy name properly the walls of darkness split and the face of the king appears and shines to everyone when they are visible and shined and blessed are all those above and below then blessings are prevalent in all the world and it is written to see my face 280 who has required this heads up from your hand Yeshua 112 he asks what does the passage mean he answers everyone who comes to establish the unity of the holy supernal name must do so from this aspect of Zot that is Malchut as is written thus heads up shall Aaron come into the holy place Vayikra 163 this is in order that the righteous which is Yezid and righteousness which is Malchut shall unite
Left this is just as a person has right and left sides and the left is included in the right and the right includes everything and when the right stirs the left stirs with it for it is linked to it and is included 283 come and behold when a person raises his hands in prayer he points his fingers upwards as is written and it came past when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed Shema 1711 everything depends on the right it is written and Aaron lifted up his hands have Yadav. Bayakra 922 Yadav is spelled without Yud which means one hand the right and then he concentrates on blessing above 284 it is not so with the Holy One blessed be he when the Holy One blessed be he raises his hand above woe to those below because all assistance and blessing has departed from them how do we know this for it is written you did stretch out your right hand the earth swallowed them Shema 1512 what is you did stretch out your right hand it is like it's Aramaic translation you raise your right hand and immediately the earth swallowed them and when the right is present the left is also with it and if the right departs then the left comes judgment stir in the world and judgments prevail over all 285 when Rabbi Shimon reached this verse he wept for it is written he has drawn back his right hand Egypt 23 is it possible that he would draw back his right hand and he answers but because the left hastened to descend into the world first the right remained in another place namely behind 286 Rabbi Shimon said it is written the righteous perishes Yeshua 571 and we explain the words it does not say that the righteous is lost but rather the righteous lost and he answers from all the aspects of the king the only one who lost was the righteous one which is yet he lost in two ways one since blessings no longer dwell on him as originally and the second is that his spouse has become distant from him that is the congregation of Israel. Namely Malchut thus the righteous one loses more than any of them and pertaining to the time to come it is written rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold your king comes to you he is just and a deliverer let delivered Zechariah 99 it is not written just and a deliverer but rather just and delivered he is most certainly delivered because his spouse has returned to him and we have already learned this 287 your right hand Hashem is glorious Heb. Any Eteri in power Shemot 156 why does it say any Eteri it should say the more common any Eteri and he answers when the left comes to unite with the right then is written any Eteri hadash the enemy in pieces it is always thus when it unites with the right because the left is present in the right and is included in it 288 Rabbi Shimon said it is as we established because man is really divided meaning that he is only half a body and his second half is a woman what is the reason in Order that afterwards he should receive his spouse and the two should truly become one body so is your right hand really divided it is only half a body what is the reason in order to receive the left and it is also one with one with one hand he smites and cures therefore it is written your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces 289 come and behold the song was sung about that time and about the time to come when King Messiah will be aroused as written your right hand Hashem has dashed lit will dash the enemy in pieces it is not written has dashed that is in the past tense but will dash in the future tense thus this is also for the future to come it is written before regarding the exile he has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy at that time in the time to come it will dash the enemy in pieces 290 and it is all in this matter you have lit will overthrown them that rose up against you Shemot 157 it is not written you have Overthrown, but literally you will overthrow, and similarly you did lit will send forth your anger which consumed them as double if it is all in the time to come. Your right hand Hashem is glorious in power is in this time in this world. Your right hand Hashem will dash the enemy in pieces refers to the time of King Messiah and in the greatness of your excellency you have overthrown them that rose up against you refers to the coming of Gog and Magog Armageddon you will send forth. Your anger which will consume them as double refers to the resurrection of the dead as written and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 122 291 Rabbi Shimon said during that time blessed are those who will remain in the world and who are they come and behold there will not remain any in the world except those who are circumcised who accepted the holy covenant and entered into the tomb. Parts of the Holy Covenant namely circumcision and membrane uncovering as we have established and one who guards the member the covenant not to insert it where he should not these are those who will remain and be inscribed for eternal life 292 how do we know this from the words and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy everyone in Jerusalem that is written to life Yeshua 43 it is understood from he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem that everyone who is circumcised attains these two levels Zion and Jerusalem if he observes that covenant properly and is careful and particular about it it is written he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem these will remain in that time and the Holy One blessed be he will renew the world and rejoice with them in reference to that time it is written may the glory of Hashem endure forever let Hashem rejoice in his works Tehillim 10431 293 Rabbi Shia was traveling to Rabbi Lazar he found him sitting near Rabbi Yossi the son of Rabbi Shimon son of Lakunya his father-in-law he raised his head and saw Rabbi Shia he said in that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Ashur Assyria a blessing in the midst of the land whom Hashem Sebot he shall bless saying blessed be Egypt my people and Ashur the work of my hands and the children of Israel my inheritance Yeshua 1924-25 he asks are then Ashur and Egypt close to the Holy One blessed be he 294 he answers this refers to all those members of the exiles who will go up from Egypt and Ashur and if we say that it refers to Egypt and Ashur themselves it refers to the pious among them who repented and remained to serve Israel and King Messiah as it is written and may all kings fall down before him Tehillim 7211 and, and kings shall be your foster fathers Yeshua 4923 295 he said to him what is the meaning of her ways or ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace Mishlei 317 he said to him how foolish are the people of the world who do not know or pay attention to the words of Torah the words of Torah are the way to merit that pleasantness of Hashem as it is written her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace they are ways of pleasantness indeed he asks what is pleasantness and he answers it is as written to behold the pleasantness of Hashem Tehillim 274 which is finally established that this is because the Torah and her ways are derived from that pleasantness and these ways are explained in it and hence her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace 296 Rabbi Shia said we have learned at the time that the Holy One blessed be he gave the Torah to Yisrael Allah emitted from that pleasantness which is bond and the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and crowned himself with it meaning that he received the first three Sfirah from her called the crown and from that pleasantness the luster of all the worlds of all the firmaments and of all the crowns sparkled about that moment it is written go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon Sherhasherim 311 King Solomon is Zeir and his mother is bond and the crown is the first three Sfirah 297 at the time that the temple was built the Holy One blessed be he was crowned with that crown and sat on his throne which is Malchut from the time that the temple was destroyed the Holy One blessed be he was not crowned with his crowns and that pleasantness which is the light of Bino was covered and concealed section 21 when Moses entered into the cloud Rabbi Lazar tells of Moses journey into the cloud where he was met by the angels Kemuel and then Adarniel and then Sandalphone who receives prayers Moses trembled in fright until the Holy One blessed be he strengthened him and Moses found his power in those realms through saying the 72 letters of the supernal holy name God taught him the Torah but when the children of Israel sinned below the angels which to harm Moses God gave him his protection and his radiant light and Moses went down with the tablets his face shining with illumination Rabbi Shia says that as long as the children of Israel are occupied with Torah the strength of all the heathen nations is broken 298 Rabbi Lazar said when Moses entered into the cloud it is written and Moses went into the midst of the cloud Shema 2418 is one who goes in the place of the spirit a great angel met him we learned that his name is Kemuel and he is assigned over 12,000 appointed messengers he wanted to join with Moses Moses opened his mouth with the 12 engraved letters of the holy name that the holy one blessed be he taught him at the bush and he distanced himself 12 parasangs from Moses who was standing in the cloud with his eyes glowing like coals of fire 299 then a certain angel who was greater and
Strong fire of an angel whose name is Sandalphone. We have learned that Sandalphone is 500 years higher than his other associates. He stands behind the curtain of his master and he braids him crowns from the request of the prayers of Israel. And when this crown reaches the head of the holy king, he receives all Israel's prayers. All the hosts and multitudes shudder and groan and say, Blessed is the glory of Hashem from the dwelling place of his Chechenah 300 and 200. Neil said to him, Moses, I cannot go with you. I fear that the strong fire of Sandalphone will burn me at that moment. Moses shuddered until the holy one blessed be. He grasped Moses at him before him and taught him Torah and he covered Moses with that light and the radiant shine of that pleasantness. And the face of Moses illuminated throughout the firmaments. All the hosts of heaven were trembling before him at that moment that he descended with the Torah 300 and 3. As soon as Israel sinned below the holy one blessed be, he took a Thousand parts of that radiant shine from Moses at that moment the angels of above and all the multitudes wanted to burn Moses namely when the Holy One blessed be he said to him go get you down for your people have become corrupt Shema 327 Moses shuddered and could not speak until he increased and intensified supplications and prayers before the Holy One blessed be he 304 the Holy One blessed be he said to him Moses grasped my throne until the Holy One blessed be he castigated all the multitudes all these hosts and then Moses held the two stone tablets and brought them down that is the meaning of what is written a wise man scales the city of the mighty and casts down the stronghold in which it trusts Mishlei 2122 from that radiant shine that remained in him the face of Moses sparkled and if in this remnant that remained with him they could not gaze into his face then into what had left and gone from him most surely would they not be able to gaze 305 Rabbi Shia said your right hand Hashem is glorious in power. Shema 156 refers to the Torah that glorifies the right and therefore your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces for there is nothing in the world that can break the power of the heathen peoples like Israel when they are occupied with Torah as long as they are occupied with Torah the right is strengthened and the power and strength of the heathen are broken therefore the Torah is called strength as is written Hashem gives strength to his people. Tehillim 2911 306 when Israel are not occupied with Torah the left is strengthened and the power of the heathen nations who nurture from the left is strengthened they rule over Israel and pass decrees which Israel cannot tolerate the children of Israel were exiled and dispersed among the nations for this reason 307 this is the meaning of the verse why does the land perish and Hashem says because they have forsaken my Torah your 911 to 12 as long as Israel are Occupied with Torah the strength of might of all the heathens is broken this is what is meant by your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces Rabbi Lazar said it is certainly so as we learned that as long as the voice of Israel is heard in the synagogues and study halls the voice is the voice of Jacob Bershi 2722 but if not then the hands are the hands of Esau as we have already explained section 22 and in the greatness of your excellency you have overthrown them that rose up against you Rabbi Shishkia opens with why stand you afar off Hashem why hide you yourself in times of trouble he says that when the world sends the Holy One blessed be he ascends farther away and people cry with no one to hear them repentance is withheld from them Rabbi Yitzhak says that the title verse of this section refers to the time that God will attire himself with majesty over the nations that will come against him and destroy them we hear that God shall resurrect the kings who were the enemies of Israel and provide them with a governing dominion above and they will make war against Jerusalem and God will take revenge on them this will happen at the time of Messiah and Armageddon 308 and in the greatness of your excellency you have overthrown them that rose up against you Shemot 157 Rabbi Shishkia opened the discussion saying why stand you afar off Hashem why hide you yourself in times of trouble Tehillim 101 at the time that the inequities of the world cause it the Holy One blessed be he ascends higher and higher and people shed tears and cry yet there is no one to pay attention to them what is the reason because the Holy One blessed be he ascends higher and higher and repentance is withheld from them and it is written and in the greatness of your excellency you have overthrown them that rose up against you 309 Rabbi Yitzhak said this verse refers to the time when the Holy One blessed be he will attire himself with majesty over the nations that shall gather against him as it is written and the princes take counsel together against Hashem and against his anointed Tehillim 22 as we have learned 70 generals of armies shall gather from every side at that time with the hosts of the entire world to wage war against Jerusalem the holy city and to plant against the holy one blessed be he what do they say let us rise against the protector first and then against his people and his sanctuary 310 then the holy one blessed be he will laugh at them as is written he who sits in the heavens laughs Hashem has them in derision and before at that time the holy one blessed be he will don majesty against them and will destroy them from the world as is written and this shall be the plague with which Hashem will smite all the peoples that have fought against Jerusalem their flesh shall be consumed while they stand upon their feet Zechariah 1412 311 Rabbi Abba said quoting Rabbi Yesus Abba, Elder and also Rabbi Shimon said the Holy One blessed be he shall resurrect those kings that distressed Israel and Jerusalem namely Adrianus and Lepinus Nebuchadnezzar and Senchef and all the other kings of the world that took part in the destruction of his house then he will provide them with a the governing dominion as before and the rest of the nations will gather with them and they will war against Jerusalem the Holy One blessed be he will take revenge on them openly around Jerusalem this is the meaning of and this shall be the plague with which Hashem will smite all the peoples that have fought against Jerusalem it is not written that will fight but rather that have fought in the past tense because it refers to Nebuchadnezzar who had already fought and it is written and in the greatness of your excellency you have overthrown them that rose up against you this is written about the time when Messiah will come and this song is a never ending song 312 and with the blast of your nostrils the waters piled up Shemot 158 namely at that time therefore this shall happen at that time in the time of King Messiah and in the time of Gog and Magog Armageddon the flood stood upright like a heap refers to the world to come which is the joy of all the world section 23 the enemy said I will curse I will overtake we are told that the enemy spoken of here is the great minister appointed over Egypt along with all the ministers appointed over all the heathen nations he wanted to destroy the children of Israel but the Holy One blessed be he protected them when he remembered the mountains of the world the patriarchs 313 the enemy said I will curse I will overtake I will divide the spoil Shemot 159 the enemy is the great minister appointed over Egypt when he was given dominion over Israel he intended to destroy them under his domination but the Holy One blessed be he remembered the mountains of the world the patriarchs who protected them do not think that he alone wanted to destroy them because all the ministers who were appointed over all the heathen nations desired to destroy Israel under them when they were granted authority and dominion over Israel 314 therefore these nations that are under the domination of these appointees all declare decrees to destroy Israel but the Holy One blessed be he remembers the mountains of the world which are the patriarchs and he protects them when Moses saw this he started to praise the Holy One blessed be he and said who is like you among the mighty Hashem section 24 who is like you among the mighty Hashem Rabbi Shimon speaks of a great strong supernal tree that sustains those above and those below the 70 branches are the 70 princes that are appointed over the 70 nations of the world when their time of dominion arrives they want to destroy the trunk of the tree that rules over the children of Israel on it other hand when the domination of the trunk reaches them it wants to guard them and to arrange peace among them all it is said that this is like the holy one blessed be he who guards everything and does not want to destroy the nations completely as they had wanted to do when they dominated rabbi yossi turns to the verse i have seen all the works that are done under the sun and behold all is vanity and a striving after wind in a dialogue with rabbi shimon we are told that a man's good deed turns into a breath that becomes an advocate before god but that his bad deed turns into a breath that breaks his spirit the holy breath from the good deed leads the person when his soul leaves him and raises him to the place of glory above and is present to bind him in the bond of life rabbi shimon says that when the holy temple was first built below it was based on judgment and anger but in the time to come god shall perfect it in a different higher level called righteousness 315 rabbi Shimon said there is a great and strong tall supernal tree which is Zeir and those above and those below are sustained through it and it is bordered by twelve
Arrange peace among them all for this purpose. Seventy oxen are offered during Sukkot, the holiday of booths, to bring peace among the seventy branches in the tree, which are the seventy patron angels of the nations of the world. Three hundred and seventeen pertaining to this it is said, Who is like you among the mighty Hebelim Hashem? What is the meaning of Elim tree as is written? For you shall be ashamed of the sacred oaks Hebelim on which you set your desires. Yeshua 129 For they worshipped an image that was engraved on this tree who is like you to do as you do and have mercy upon all who is like you throughout the surrounding of the tree even though he dominates he guards everything he guards all the rest and does not desire to destroy them completely as they wanted to do when they dominated who is like you glorious in holiness means that it is glorious with the supernal power which is called holiness verily it is glorious in holiness which is the mokin of and is called the strength of Hashem and the pleasantness of Hashem and we have hereby expounded on the words 318 who is like you among the mighty Hashem Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and behold all is vanity and a striving after wind Kahilat 114 he asks how could King Solomon who was greater in his wisdom than all other people of the world say that all the works are vanity and a striving after wind is it possible that the deed of righteousness, I ask also vanity and a striving after wind is it not written, and the work of righteousness shall be peace. Yeshayah 3217. He answers, We have already established that it is written, All the works that are done under the sun, but the work of righteousness is different, for it is above the sun. 319. And behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. He asks, What is its meaning? If all is vanity, had Hevel means as we established being in the secret of wisdom, as is said. Vanity of vanity says Kahila Kahila 12, and these vanities are the sustenance of the upper and lower world. Then what can be said of this verse here? And behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. 320. This is the way we explained it, and this is how it is come. And behold, when deeds in the world are good, and one strives to be occupied with the service of the Holy King, the good deed that he does turns into a breath, had Hevel above, and each and every breath from which a voice. A sense above becomes a defense counselor before the Holy One, blessed be he, 321, all these works that a person is occupied with which are not in the service of the Holy One, blessed be he, become a breath which goes and flies about the world, and when his soul departs that breath rolls him through the world like a stone in a sling as is written, and the souls of your enemies them shall he sling out as out of the hollow of a sling, Ishmael 2529, 322, he asks what is the meaning of shall he sling out, and he answers that breath rolls it around in the world, and all the things that are done and are not in the service of the Holy One, blessed be he, turn into a breath which is the breaking of spirit, for this breaks the spirit that goes up and down and rolls throughout the world, this is what is meant by vanity and is striving after wind, also spirit 323, but the thing that is in the service of his master ascends to a level above the sun and becomes a holy breath, this is the seed. That the person sows in that world and what is it called righteousness as is written so for you by righteousness Hashia 1012 324 this leads the person when his soul leaves him raises him to the place of glory above and is present to bind him in the bundle of life this is what is meant by and your righteousness shall go before you Yeshayah 588 in order to lead you and to raise you to the place that is called the glory of Hashem which is Malchut as it is written the glory of Hashem shall be your regard of it 325 all these souls that the holy breath leads which is called the glory of Hashem it gather into itself and they are bound in it then there is peace of spirit but the other breath that is not the service of Hashem is called striving after when blessed are the righteous for all their actions are above the sun namely the service of the holy one blessed be he and they sow the seed of righteousness so they merit in the world to come and about this it is written but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise Malachi 320 326 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold originally when the holy temple was built below it was only based upon judgment and anger as a provocation of my anger and of my fury Yermeah 3231 this is because it is in the place where judgment dwells in the time to come the holy one blessed be he shall build and perfect it in a different higher level called righteousness which is the perfected Malchut as written in righteousness Hephzedakah shall you be established Yeshua 5414 therefore it will endure and will not be destroyed again and its actual name will be called righteousness Hephzedakah how do we know it is written and this is his name whereby he shall be called Hashem is our righteousness Hephzedakah Yermeah 236 section 25 you did stretch out your right hand the earth swallowed them the rabbis have some difficulty with the fact that God stretched out his right hand seemingly to perform judgment, yet the right hand is of Jesus. The explanation is that he separated the right hand so that the left hand performed the acts of judgment. We are told that he has guided the righteous with his strength and his arm to his holy habitation. Rabbi Shimon speaks about the latter generation that Joshua circumcised and in whom he revealed the holy imprint of the name of God. Everyone who is circumcised and in whom the holy marking has been revealed is called righteous. Rabbi Shimon reminds us that there is no word or letter in the Torah that does not contain supernal secrets. 327 You did stretch out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. Shema 1512 Yet he was asked again the right acts with Jesus, and he answers, But we have learned that it means you have raised your right hand and the left remained alone and performed acts of judgment. Rabbi Yitzhak said the friends observed that when the Holy One blessed be he extracted the dead Egyptians. From under the water he said to the earth, Gather them unto you, it did not want to until the Holy One blessed be he lifted the right hand against it and placed it under oath, and it is written, The earth swallowed them. Rabbi Lazar said, You did stretch out your right hand, meaning to separate it from the left, and judgment was performed through the left. 328 You and your mercy led forth the people whom you have redeemed. Shemot 1513 This is as is written, but your right hand and your arm. And the light of your countenance, because you did favorably accept them. Tehillim 444 But your right hand refers to greatness, namely, she said, You have guided them in your strength. What is meant by in your arm, which is pure to your holy habitation, is what is written, and the light of your countenance, for you did favorably accept them. It is the righteous which is Yezid, and they are all present in the passage, all the six Firat, because Jesus and Bura include Tiferet, and Yezid includes. Netzach and Ha 329 fear have and dread shall fall upon them. He asked it is written Amada, but the more common form Amash should have been used. Why Amada? There is not one word or letter in the Torah that does not contain high secrets, and if so, what is the meaning of Em? Also, the fear of her Rabbi Shimon said it means the terror of the Shechina, and it is like the dread of Hey which is the Shechina 330. Similarly, you shall bring them Hat Tiba in. And plant them Hat Tiba in the mountain of your inheritance. It should have said Tiba and Tiba Yimo Yimo with Bob. He answers the Holy Spirit is speaking about the latter generation that Joshua circumcised, and in whom he revealed the holy imprint of the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he, they were linked with the Bob, which is Zeir and they were worthy to inherit the land, as is written, Your people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever, Yeshua. 6021 Because everyone who is circumcised and in whom the holy marking has been revealed and who observes it is called righteous, therefore they shall inherit the land forever. 331 Therefore, Tibaimo is spelled with an extra Bob, which means that you will bring those attached to the Bob and plant them as it said, the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified. But those that are connected to the Bob, that is Zeir and and is the allusion to those latter ones in the times of Joshua. There is no word or small letter in the Torah that does not contain supernal secrets and holy reasons. Blessed is the portion of those who are familiar with them. Section 26 Building the lower temple. We hear that it is a commandment to build the lower temple similar to the temple of above, and that the temple must have windows in it. One must not pray in the field because an edifice is required to bring down the Sheshanah to the human beings, Isaac. Prayed in the field, but he was one of the patriarchs, so he was different. Rai Mahim, the faithful shepherd. 332 It is a commandment to build the lower temple similar to the temple of above, as is written in the place Hashem which you have made for you to dwell in. Shemot 1517 Because it is necessary to build a temple below to say a prayer in it every day and to serve the Holy One. Blessed be he, because prayer is called service. 333 It is necessary to build that particular synagogue with great beauty and to outfit it with
The windows he peers through the lattice sure hashering 29 if you ask whether IT is permitted to pray in the field because a spirit can ascend there it is not so because we need an edifice and there is not any it is necessary to establish an edifice below similar to the edifice above which is Malchut to bring down the supernal dweller which is the Shechinah to the inhabitants of below human beings 337 also that prayer and that spirit should ascend and exit from the narrow strait in a straight path towards Jerusalem about this is written out of my distress lid from the narrow strait I called upon Yah Elim 1185 for it is necessary to have a place that is narrow and tight to cast into it that spirit so that it should not turn to the right or to left but in a field the voice cannot be projected to him in this way similar to this is the sound of the shofar that is projected outward in a smooth straight way from a narrow place and it goes and splits firmaments and ascends upwards to stimulate the spirit of above 338 and you may ask is it not written and Isaac went out to meditate in the field Beersheet 2463 so we see that praying takes place even in the field and he answers Isaac was different for he had something else that the rest of the world did not have he was one of the patriarchs and also this verse did not come for this purpose to permit praying in the field for certainly in a different field he would not have been praying as we have already explained that this field was the field that Abraham had purchased and of Rai Mahin Rabbi Abba speaks of a song that is composed of 22 holy engraved letters and 10 sayings and which is imprinted on the holy name Rabbi Shimon says that while the children of Israel were standing by the sea and singing God appeared to them with all his chariots and hosts every one of them saw what the other prophets of the world did not all of them sang the same song simultaneously and in rhythm and it Holy Spirit was in their mouths it is obvious that they all perceived the supernal wisdom at that time when the song was over the children of Israel did not want to leave because of their great longing to perceive God until Moses showed them the radiant shine of the glory of the Holy One blessed be he in the wilderness thus it is called the wilderness of Shirlit observe 339 we have learned that Rabbi Abba said blessed is the portion of those who merit to sing this song in this world and merit to say it in the world to come this song is composed of 22 holy engraved letters and with 10 sayings and it is all imprinted on the holy name and it is all the perfection of the holy name and we have made observations about these things 340 Rabbi Shimon said at the moment that Israel were standing by the sea and singing songs the Holy One blessed be he appeared to them with all his chariots and hosts in order that they should know their king who had done for them all these Miracles and mighty acts each and every one knew and noticed what the other prophets of the world did not know or notice 341 for if you say that they had no knowledge and did not attain supernal wisdom then from this song you can see that they all beheld wisdom and knew those things they recited for if not how could they all say the same words without varying one from another whatever this one said the other one said and one word was not said before the other but rather they all said them in the same rhythm and the Holy Spirit was in the mouth of each and every one and the words were all enunciated as though they were emitted from one mouth most certainly they all noticed and perceived the supernal wisdom and were familiarized with these lofty particulars and the Holy Spirit was in the mouth of each and every one 342 even those in their mother's wombs were saying the song all as one they all saw that which even the prophet Ezekiel did not see and they therefore watched as Though they saw Ijuai when they concluded the words they all bore fragrance on their own and yearned to conceive and perceive and did not want to travel from there so great was their desire 343 at that moment Moses said to the Holy One blessed be he your children because of their great longing to perceive you do not want to travel from the sea what did the Holy One blessed be he do he concealed his glory out of the wilderness and there he appeared yet did not appear Moses said to Israel many times have I said that you should travel from there but you did not want to until I showed you the splendor of the glory of the Holy One blessed be he in the wilderness they were immediately desirous 344 but they did not travel until Moses grasped them and showed them the radiant shine of the glory of the Holy One blessed be he in the wilderness then because of great longing and desire to perceive Moses caused them to travel this is what is meant by so Moses brought Israel. From the Sea of Suf and they went out into the wilderness of Shur Shema 1522 What is the meaning of the wilderness of Shur? This was the desert where they wanted to perceive and gaze upon the precious splendor of the Holy King therefore it is called the wilderness of Shur Lit Observed which means there is gazing there section 27 and found no water and they marched three days in the wilderness and found no water Water means the Torah which had not yet been given to them Rabbi Lazar says that is true and that Torah is the Holy One blessed be he when they came to the bitter water of Merah Hashem showed him a tree the tree means Torah and it means the Holy One blessed be he it was when they arrived at Merah that they entered fully into the covenant with God where he made for them a statute and an ordinance 345 and they marched three days in the wilderness and found no water Shema 1522 Water means nothing if not the Torah as is written ho. Everyone that thirsts come to the water Yeshayah 551 Rabbi Yisus said and who gave them Torah here for until now the Torah was not yet given to them 346 Rabbi Lazar said they went out into the wilderness to gaze and perceive but the Holy One blessed be he removed his precious splendor from there they went in order to conceive him but did not find him we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he is called Torah therefore water is Torah and Torah is the Holy One blessed be he 347 Rabbi Shimon said while they were still traveling in the wilderness a different government of the other nations appeared to them namely that one which dominates the wilderness and it met them there then Israel saw that it was not the precious splendor of their king this is what is meant by and when they came to Merah they could not drink the waters of Merah Shemot 1528 why for they were bitter their souls were not gratified as before and even more he had come to accuse them 348 it is written and he cried to Hashem and Hashem showed him a tree of 25 a tree means only Torah as is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 and Torah means the Holy One blessed be he Rabbi Abba said tree means the Holy One blessed be he as is written for a man is the tree of the field Devarim 2019 the tree of the field assuredly is the tree of the field of the holy apples meaning this field is Malchut the tree of the field refers to Zeir and her husband and when the splendor of the glory of the king appeared over them then when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet Shemot 1525 what is the meaning of and the waters were made sweet it means that the accuser has become an advocate 349 Rabbi Abba said come and behold when Israel first entered into the covenant of the Holy One blessed be he they did not enter properly why because they circumcised but did not uncover thus the holy sign was not revealed but when they Arrived here to Merah it is written there he made for them a statue and an ordinance Shemot 1525 which means that Israel entered into the two holy parts Malchut and Yezid which they merited by the circumcision and membrane uncovering and that revealing in which their sign was uncovered and revealed they were called a statute and an ordinance statute had shock is Malchut as is written and gives food to her household and a portion had shock to her maidens Mishlei 3115 IT encompasses Malchut and alludes to circumcision ordinance as is written an ordinance of Elohim of Jacob Tehillim 815 this is Yezid alluding to Mokin that are revealed through the membrane uncovering that is called ordinance and there he tested them namely with his holy sign since it is a statute it can be tested as is written for this is a statute for Israel Rabbi Yubasaba the elder said in his book it refers to that holy staff regarding which is said and Hashem showed him a tree. Section 28 And he said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of Hashem when they attained the covenant, the children of Israel attained Malchut Yezid Netzach and Hot and therefore reached the Holy King Tiferet. We learn of the proper circumcision and uncovering and the holy anointing oil that allowed the circumcised to bond with the Holy King. The text speaks of the protection for the holy mark for four things the children of Israel merit welcoming the Shechinah through guarding. Against the impurity of menstruation, we hear of the protection of the righteous, protection from the maidservant, protection from a heathen woman, and protection from a harlot. We read that God did not want to give the children of Israel the Torah until they were close to him, and he achieved this closeness by the covenant of circumcision 350. And he said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of Hashem, your Elohim, Shema 1526, what is the meaning of and he said it does not say who said this. Rather the Holy One blessed be he said this Rabbi Shizkiah said we derive meaning from one big saying to
Uncovering Yizit as soon as they attain these two they also attain these other two parts which are Netzach and Had because when they are elevated by Netzach and Had they will join with Yizit and Malchut and the blessings that Yizit will cause to flow to Malchut will not be withheld therefore they will reach through these up to the Holy King which is CEIR and 353 and from the placement of the verses the subject understood for it is written and he said if you will diligently hearken and he said refers to the Holy King and what did he say if you hearken diligently to the voice of Hashem your Elohim it is as written for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire Devarim 424 which is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut and will do that which is right in his sight refers to the righteous who is called right and give ear to his commandments refers to Netzach and keep all his statutes refers to Had since they have attained these Malchut Yizit Netzach and Hod, they have reached the Holy King who is Typhoret whose place is after Netzach therefore what is written afterwards I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon Egypt for I am Hashem that heals you for I am Hashem refers to the Holy One blessed be he who is Typhoret 354 it is understood that whoever guards this holy sign which is circumcision ascends from it unto the supernal Holy King he asks what is understood from these words and he answers it is understood that these two Netzach and Hod in which the seed accumulates for blessing and the holy anointing oil that is poured over the head of the male organ which is Yezid combined together and the supernal King Typhoret is over them and they connect with him therefore whoever enters these two Yezid and Malchut by means of circumcision and uncovering and guards them is connected to two others Netzach and Hod and enters them and then reaches the Holy King which is Typhoret 355 Rabbi Itzhak. Said most certainly one who merits the righteous which is Yezid merits Netzach and Had because Yezid includes Netzach and Had and they are three with which the congregation of Israel which is Malchut is blessed and he who merits them merits also the holy king that is Tiferet and attains all four Sfirah Tiferet Netzach Had Yezid and Malchut 356 and corresponding to these four there is protection for the holy sign from four things the protection of the congregation of Israel which is Malchut which is protection from the impurity of menstruation protection of the righteous which is Yezid that is protection from the maidservant protection of Netzach which is protection from a heathen woman and protection of Had which is protection from a harlot this is why the voice of Hashem your Elohim is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut which they enter through circumcision 357 how did Israel merit to welcome the Sheshanah it is through guarding against the impurity of menstruation and about this is written also you shall not approach a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow to uncover her nakedness Vayikra 1819 he asks to uncover her nakedness of whom he answers of the congregation of Israel meaning not to blemish her and in this way other things that the congregation of Israel is bound to join and connect to and we have already explained this matter 358 and will do that which is right in his sight this refers to the righteous who is yes it is as written the eyes of Hashem are toward the righteous Tehillim 3416 we have discussed being wary of a maid servant in accordance with the verse and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress Mishlei 3023 which means that it causes the righteous to cleave onto a handmaid and give ear to his commandments refers to Netzach for one should not insert the sign into a heathen woman nor be false with it to Netzach for it is written and also the eternal one let Netzach of Israel will not lie, Shmuel 1529, and he who observes this, the holy covenant fulfills his commandments as is written, for you shall worship no other El Shema 3414 and keep all his statutes. This is hot to beware of a harlot 359. This agrees with what we have learned. Rabbi Yehuda said it is written, Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty warrior, your glory and your majesty. Tehillim 454. This refers to he who makes haste to place the fear of the strong sharpened sword which is Malchut before him. Upon the thigh, what is upon your thigh? It means upon this holy sign to guard it as is written, put I pray you your hand under my thigh. Bear she 242, 360. Another explanation for gird your sword, it means expedite and strengthen yourself, overpower your evil inclination which is your sword upon your thigh. Upon that holy covenant to guard it, if he guards it, then he is called mighty and the holy one blessed be he dresses him in his garments. What are the garments of the holy one blessed? Be he there hot and net as is written you are clothed with glory and majesty Tehillim 1041 here also your glory and your majesty then the person cleaves unto the holy king properly 361 from here and further I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon Egypt for I am Hashem that heals you this is the holy king therefore he admonished them about that very thing that he gave and marked in them which is the covenant of the circumcision and no more and it is true that although until now the Torah was not yet given to them yet it is written there he made for them a stature and an ordinance which are circumcision and the uncovering of the membrane forthwith and he said if you will diligently hearken which refers to the four ways to observe the member of the holy covenant as explained 362 come and behold when the holy one blessed be he wanted to admonish Israel about the Torah with how many words and with how many persuasions of love did he draw them like a father who draws his son to school come and behold the Holy One blessed be he did not want to give them the Torah until they were close to him how did they become attracted to him by uncovering the sign which is the circumcision as we have learned 363 Rabbi Yehuda said Israel did not come close to Mount Sinai until they entered the portion of the righteous namely circumcision and attained it how do we know this because it is written the same Hebzai day they came to the wilderness of Sinai Shema 191 the very day exactly which is Yezid that is called Zay and it is written and it shall be said on that day lo this is our Elohim we have waited for him Yeshayah 259 section 29 the story of the man Rabbi Yehuda discusses the verse blessed is he who considers the poor Hashem will deliver him in the day of evil Rabbi Shia wonders about poor Hashem hears the poor asking if he listens only to the poor and no others Rabbi. Shimon says merely that it is that they are closer to the king as there is no one in the world who has a broken heart like a needy person. We are told the story of Rabbi Yisai who brought back a poor man from the dead. The poor man's soul went to the king's throne and learned that three chairs were prepared ready for Rabbi Yisai, the son of Rabbi Yaakov and Rabbi Shishkiah. We read of another incident with the poor person and Rabbi Yitzhak and a dream about Rabbi Shimon and the poor person every day. The dew of Atika Kaddish drips down to Zerenpin and is drawn to those below and it nourishes the holy angels. The children of Israel ate that food in the wilderness because it was a man. Rabbi Shimon says that those who are occupied with the Torah day and night are still nourished from it today. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they had unleavened bread, but now they merited a different higher bread from a high place. Scholars who are occupied with Torah are nourished from a high place. Rabbi Lazar wonders why those scholars seem weaker than other people and Rabbi Shimon explains that the Torah scholars eat the food of the spirit and soul and do not eat the food of the body at all therefore their bodies are weaker this higher food is equated to chocolate or wisdom returning to the question of the poor we learn that one who helps fulfill the poor person has a letter added to tzedek righteousness so that it becomes tzedek a charity more precious than these is the food of it. Sick and more supreme than that is the food of spirits and souls that comes from Bina that has returned to become chakma and more precious than all of them is the food that comes from the supernal chakma which is what the Torah scholars eat this is because Torah emanates from the supernal chakma Rabbi Yossi says that all believers must request their food from God on a daily basis and pray for it because that causes the tree that contains everyone's food to be blessed from them therefore. One need not cook food on one day for another day one must hope in his steadfast love we are reminded that the righteous eats to satisfy his soul those who do not have faith burden themselves every day over food out of fear that perhaps they will not acquire a loaf of bread Rabbi Lazar taught that the righteous shall eat of that manna in the world to come Rabbi Shimon says that every person who puts a desire before the holy king must concentrate his whole will and heart on it in order to draw the blessing from the wellspring of all a person must prepare his table on Sabbath night so that blessings from above will dwell on him blessing is not present on an empty table the Sabbath is the inclusion of all the other days and from it they are blessed 364 and Hashem said to Moses behold I will rain bread from heaven for you Shema 264 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying blessed is he who considers the poor Hashem will deliver him in the day of evil Tehillim 412
considers the poor how strong is the reward of the one who assists the needy before the Holy One. Blessed be he. 367. Rabbi Shia said, I wondered about this passage. For Hashem hears the poor. Tehillim 6934. Does he hearken only unto the poor and no others? Rabbi Shimon said, It is because they are closer to the king as is written, A broken and a contrite heart. O Elohim, you will not despise. Tehillim 5119. And there is no one in the world one who has a broken heart like a needy person. Rabbi Shimon. Also said, Come and behold, all the people of the world appear before the Holy One. Blessed be he in body and soul, but the poor appear before the Holy One. Blessed be he only in soul because his body is broken, and the Holy One. Blessed be he is closer to the soul than to the body. 368. There was a poor man who lived in the neighborhood of Rabbi Isa. No one paid any attention to him. He himself was bashful and did not press upon other people. One day he became ill. Rabbi Isa came in to visit him and heard a voice saying, Justice, justice, meaning that he gave a statement of justice to heaven. The soul is departing from me, but my time has not yet arrived. Woe to the inhabitants of the city, for there is no one among them to return his soul to him. Rabbi Isa arose and put some fig juice and a measure of spicy wine into his mouth. A sweat broke out in his face, and his spirit returned to him. 369. Afterwards he came to visit and he inquired about him. He said, I swear, Rabbi, the soul left me and reached the king's throne and wanted to remain there, but the Holy One, blessed be he, wanted to award you, and they announced of you, Rabbi Yisa's spirit will depart, and he shall be bound in a particularly holy assembly, namely in the great assembly, idra Rabbi, and not in the smaller assembly that the friends shall raise in the land, and they have prepared three chairs that are standing ready for you and your friends, Rabbi Yosi, the son of Rabbi Yaakov, and Rabbi Shizkiah, whose souls departed during this assembly. From that day onward, the inhabitants of the city watched and paid attention to him. 370. Another incident occurred when a poor person passed before Rabbi Yitzhak with half a coin of silver in his hand. He said to Rabbi Yitzhak, Save my and my daughter's souls. He said, How can I make whole your souls when I have only a half coin? He said, I will complete it here by with the half coin I have in my possession. He took it out and gave it to him. 371. They showed him in his dream how he was traveling along the edge of the great sea and they wanted to throw him into it. He described how Rabbi Shimon stretched out his hand towards him and that poor person came took him out and gave him into the hands of Rabbi Shimon and he was saved when he awoke his mouth uttered this passage. Blessed is he who considers the poor Hashem will deliver him in the day of evil. 372 Come and behold every day the dew of Atika Kaddish drips to Zer and Pin and the whole field of holy apples is blessed which is malchute and from that dew is drawn to these below the holy angels are nourished from it each one according to his ability to eat. This is what is written man ate the bread of angels. Tehillim 7825 namely that dew mentioned earlier which is the bread of angels Yisrael ate of that food in the wilderness. The man 373 Rabbi Shimon said many people are nourished from it today and who are they? They are the friends who are occupied with Torah days and nights and if you think that it was actually the same food that the children of Israel ate in the wilderness it is not but it is very similar to that food for it is worth double the manna that the children of Israel ate in the wilderness 374 come and behold when Israel came and cleaved unto the holy king they merited and to eat a much higher bread because of the uncovering of the holy sign of the circumcised organ before when they left Egypt they came with bread called unleavened bread had matzah which is malchute now they merited to eat a different much higher bread from a hot place as is written behold I will rain bread from the heavens for you actually from the heavens which is Zeir and, and it became available to Israel from this place at that time the friends who are occupied with Torah are nourished from a higher place what is it it is as written wisdom gives life to those who have it Kahilat 712 which is a place far higher than Zeir and, and 375 Rabbi Lazar said to him if so what are those occupied with Torah weaker than other people for the other people appear to be stronger than those who are occupied with Torah? He said to him, You ask well, 376 come and behold, all the food of the inhabitants of the world comes from above. That food that comes from the heaven and the earth is the food of the whole world. It is the food of all and it is coarse and thick nourishment. The food that comes from a higher source and is a finer food comes from the place where judgment is prevalent, namely Malchut. And this is the food that Israel ate when they left Egypt, namely unleavened bread. The food that was provided Israel at that time in the wilderness was from a higher place called heavens, which is Zeir and it is a finer food that enters into the soul more than any other food. It is more separate from the body and is called the food of the angels, namely manna. 377 The food that is the highest of all is the food of the friends, those who are occupied with Torah. Who eat the food of the spirit and the soul and do not eat physical food at all it is from the place that is more precious than anything called chakma wisdom therefore the bodies of the friends are weaker than the people of the world because they do not eat the food of the body at all they eat only the food of the spirit and soul from a distant place higher and more precious than all which is chakma which is far away as is written i said i will be wise but it was far from me kahilat 723 therefore that food is far more refined than all blessed is their portion this is what is written wisdom gives life to those who have it blessed is the portion of the body that can be nourished with the food of the soul 378 rabbi laser said to him certainly it is so but in the present time how is such food to be found he said to him you ask welcome and behold this is the clarification of the matter the first food is the food of the whole world that which comes from the heavens and Earth and it is the food of the body. 379. The food that is higher than it, which is finer, comes from the place where judgment is prevalent, called righteousness. Hefzedek, which is malchut. This is the food of the poor, namely matzah. That is called the bread of affliction. And the secret of the matter is that one who helps fulfill the poor person has a letter added to tzedek, and it becomes tzedek charity. This is the secret of the merciful man does good to his own soul. Mishlei 1117 acts of kindness show that one is under judgment but has perfected it with chisa. Then it turns into mercy. 388. Food even higher than these is a supreme nourishment, more glorious and precious from the place called heaven, which is zeir and namely manna, which the children of Israel ate in the wilderness. It is finer than all of them. And this is the food of the sick. This is what is meant by Hashem strengthens him upon the bed of sickness. Whenever he is prostrate, you recover him in his. Illness Tehillim 414 Hashem is precise which is Zeir and what is the reason because these ill people are fed only with the actual food of the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and 381 a supreme food holy and precious is the food of spirits and souls and it is the food from a high and far away place which is Bina that has again become Chakma about which is said I said I will be wise but it was far from me it is the place that is called the pleasantness of Hashem meaning Bina that has returned to Chakma 382 and more precious than all of them is the food that the friends who are occupied with Torah eat it is the food that comes from the supernal Chakma which is actual Chakma what is the reason that it comes from this place it is because Torah emanates from the supernal Chakma and those who are occupied with Torah enter into the main source of the roots therefore their food comes from that high holy place 383 Rabbi Lazer approached and kissed the hands of Rabbi Shimon his father he said blessed is my portion that I understood these words blessed is the portion of the righteous who are occupied with Torah days and nights for it merits them in this world and in the world to come as is written for he is your life and the length of your days Devarim 3020 384 behold I will rain down bread from the heavens for you Rabbi you see open the discussion with the verse you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing Tehillim 14516 what is written above the eyes of all wait upon you if 15 all the people of the world hope and raise their eyes to the Holy One blessed be he therefore all believers must request their food from the Holy One blessed be he on a daily basis and pray their prayers for it 385 he asks what is the reason and he says because everyone who says his prayer to the Holy One blessed be he for his food causes that tree that contains everyone's food to be blessed through him although he has food he still must ask for it before the Holy One blessed be he and pray his prayer for nourishment every day in order that through him blessings shall be prevalent above every single day this is the meaning of blessed be on day by day Tehillim 6820 386 therefore a person should not cook food on one day for another day in order not to leave over from one day to another this is
of Israel below who elevate male and female waters that the Holy One blessed be he is glorified above what is his glory he dons tefillin in which colors are mixed with which to be glorified for the four portions are the secrets of three colors white red and green and they combine in the secret of three columns to illuminate in all perfection 389 we learned Hashem takes pleasure in or desires those who fear him he asks it should have said Hashem takes pleasure in those who fear and what is the meaning of Hashem takes pleasure those who fear him and he answers Hashem desires those who fear him means that he produced this desires and with it fulfilled the desires of those who feared him and who are the fearful for whom he produced this desire he repeats and says those who hope in his steadfast love meaning those who hope and wait every single day to request their food from the Holy One blessed be he this we learn from the verse those who hope in his steadfast love 390 Rabbi Yisus Abba the elder did not prepare his meal every day until he prayed his prayer before the Holy One blessed be he for food he said we will not prepare the meal until it is given from the king's house he then prayed his prayer before the Holy One blessed be he waited one hour and then would say by now it was already given from the king's house from now on prepare the meal this is the way of those who fear the Holy One blessed be he those who fear sin 391 of the wicked people who go crookedly in the ways of the Torah it is written woe to them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink Yeshua 511 and therefore Hashem takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love his steadfast love indeed and by this those people of faith are recognizable every single day as is written and the people shall go out and gather a certain portion every day a certain portion every day is set and not a certain portion for the next day 392 he asks why to such a degree he said it is that I may test them whether they will follow my Torah or no Shemot 164 by this meaning in the eating these people of faith are recognizable for every day they walk in the straight path in the Torah Rabbi Yitzhak said from this we understand the righteous eats to satisfy his soul Mishlei 1325 which means that not until he has satisfied his soul with prayer and the study of Torah does he eat 393 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold before the Holy One blessed be he gave the Torah to Israel he differentiated between these people of faith and the wicked who were not faithful and did not want the Torah how did he tell the difference between them by the man as is written that I may test them the Holy One blessed be he marked all those who were found to be faithful with the imprint of the sphere of Jesus as is written those who hope in his steadfast love let Jesus and all those who are not found to be faithful he removed from the supernal sphere and the man announced and said but the belly of the wicked shall feel want of it and with all this he that gathered much had nothing over and he that gathered little had no lack Shemot 1618 394 we learned that at that time Israel became perfected below similar to above as we have established by the verse and they came to Elim where were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees Shemot 1527 this means that the Holy Tree which is Zeir and was strengthened by twelve boundaries in the four sides of the world Chesed and Gvira Tiferet and Malchut and there are twelve boundaries which are the secret of the twelve springs of water and it was strengthened with seventy branches which are the seventy ministers the secret of the seventy palm trees and it all resembles that which is above three hundred and ninety-five at that time the holy dew meaning the abundant flow that is called dew drips from a concealed Atiko which is Keter and fills the head of Zeir the place that is called heaven from that dew of the supernal holy light was the manadron and descended below and when it descended it spread like flakes of layered ice and congealed below this is what is written as fine as the hoarfrost on the ground Shemot 1614 396 all these people of faith would go out and gather and bless the holy name over it and the manna emitted fragrances of all the spices of the garden of Eden because they were drawn into it and Descended below and when one placed it before him he tasted in it any taste he desired and blessed the supernal holy king 397 and the manna was blessed in his intestines and he would observe closely and have knowledge of the above to observe the supernal chakma therefore they were called the generation of knowledge and these were people of faith and the Torah was given to them to gaze into it and to know her ways 398 of those who were not faithful it is written and the people went about Hepshtu and gathered it Bimidbar 118 what is Shetu they selected foolishness Hepshtu for themselves because they were not people of faith it is written about them and grounded in mills or beat it in mortar of it who made them toil so much this is because they were not people of faith 399 similar to this are those who do not have faith in the holy one blessed be he they do not want to pay attention to his way and they burden themselves every day after food days end. Nights out of fear that perhaps they will not acquire a loaf of bread what caused them to do this it is because they are not people of faith 400 here also the people went about and gathered in their own foolishness and they wanted to toil over it this is what is written and grounded in mills and after all this work they were not successful as is written and the taste of it was like the taste of oil cake of it and no more what caused this for them it is because they were not people of faith 401 rabbi you see asked what is an oil head cake some say that it was needed in oil according to its Aramaic translation and some say that as a demon head changes to many modes so does the manna change to many tastes meaning that they tasted every taste they wanted in it rabbi Yehuda said an oil cake means nourishment from oil 402 rabbi Yitzhak said they gathered every man according to his eating shemot 1621 he asks does that mean that one who ate a little Gathered a little and one who ate more gathered more yet is it not written he that gathered much had nothing over and he that gathered little had no lack he answers rather they gathered according to the eaters this is understood from the words his eating meaning according to the number of eaters and therefore it is not written each man according to what he can eat 403 he asks what does this that each one gathered according to the amount of eaters teach us he answers if someone held a servant or maid servant and said he is mine and his neighbor came and said he is mine they would approach Moses for judgments he would say to them how many people are there in your house and how many people are in the other's house they would say the number then Moses would say to them gather tomorrow and afterwards both of you come before me the next day they would go out and gather and then go before Moses they would place before him a vessel which he would measure if that servant was a Owners then the portion of the servant would be in that vessel because there was one omer measured for each person of his household he would measure for the other and would find that the food portion of the servant was lacking in his vessel and there was one omer for each person in his household and he would say the servant belongs to this one this is what is meant by they gathered every man according to his eating and it an omer for every man according to the number of your persons. 404 Rabbi Yisa said it is written at evening you shall know that Hashem has brought you out from the land of Egypt and in the morning you shall see the glory of Hashem Shemot 166 to 7 he asks at evening you shall know how will they know he answers we have learned that every single day the laws of the Holy One blessed be he abide in the morning Jesus is roused in the world and at the time that is called evening judgment is suspended over the world as we have established Isaac instituted it. Minja afternoon prayer and Isaac is pure therefore at evening you shall know when judgment is aroused over the world you will know that with this judgment Hashem has brought you out of Egypt and in the morning you shall see the glory of Hashem because at that time Jesus is aroused over the world and he will give you nourishment 405 Rabbi Shia said it is the opposite of what is written before when we sat by the flesh pots of it three at that moment evening was awakened namely judgment and at the time that judgment was provoked Jesus was also aroused in the world this is what is written you shall know that Hashem has brought you out from the land of Egypt you will know the Jesus that he performed by you during the time of judgment and that he brought you out of the land of Egypt and in the morning you shall see the glory of Hashem the glory of Hashem is already known to be Malchut and why all this because when Hashem hears your murmuring of it 8406 Rabbi Yes, said the Holy One, blessed be he did not change his law so that she said would illuminate in the evening as Rabbi Shia said only those wicked people of the world changed and turned mercy into judgment as we learned 407 Rabbi Lazar taught that the righteous shall eat of that manna in the world to come and if you think that it is in that same manner that the children of Israel ate in the wilderness it is not so but rather more than they in such perfection that never existed what is it? It is as we have established to behold the pleasantness of Hashem and to inquire in his temple Tehillim 274 and neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you Yeshayah 643 408 see that Hashem has given you the Shabbat Shemot 1629 Rabbi Shizkiah opened the discussion
have cried to you. He asked, Did David say it this way? Is it not written with my whole heart? I have sought you. Tehillim 11910. And this passage is sufficient that is to pray with the whole heart. Why is out of the depths necessary? 410. He answers, We learned every person who makes his request before the king must concentrate his mind and desire on the source of all sources to draw blessings from the depth of the pit in order that blessings shall flow from the wellspring of all. And what is it? It is at that place from where that river which is concealed Chakma emerges and comes forth as is written and a river went out of Eden. Bershi 210 for Eden is Chakma and river is Bana namely Bana that came out of the top of Eric which is concealed Chakma and it is written there is a river whose streams make glad the city of Elohim. Tehillim 465 and this is called out of the depths the depth of all the depth of the pit from which springs emerge and are drawn to bless all. This is the beginning of drawing blessings downward from above 411. Rabbi Shizkiah explains his words when the most concealed addict desires to bring blessings for the world he places and includes everything in that supreme depth which is concealed Chakma of Eric and of the aspect of Bana emerging out of IT and from here a river which is Bana is draws and flows and rivers and well springs emerge from it which are the Mokin and everything is watered from it for all the Mokin of it. Male and the female and Bria Yitzhara and Asiyah are drawn from there and whoever says his prayer must concentrate his heart and desire to draw blessings from this depth of all in order that his prayer is accepted and his desire is carried out 412 and Moses said to them let no man leave of it till morning Shema 1619 Rabbi Yehuda said every single day the world is blessed from that supernal day for all the six days are blessed from the seventh day and every day gives from that blessing that it receives on its own day 413 therefore Moses said let no man leave of it till morning what is the reason because one day does not borrow or give to another rather each one reigns exclusively alone in its day because one day cannot reign in the day of its neighbor 414 therefore all these five days reign on their respective days and that which they received is available in them the sixth day contains more and this is according to what Rabbi Lazar said it is written. The sixth day with the definite article equals Hay which is not written of the other days but this is the way they established it. The sixth day with the Hay shows that the queen is joined with it who is called Hay which is Malchut to prepare the table for the king therefore it has two parts one from the day itself and one from establishing the joy of the king with the queen. 415 that night is the joy of the queen with the king and their uniting and all the six days are blessed each one on its own. Therefore a person must prepare his table on Shabbat night so that blessings from above will dwell upon him and a blessing is not present on an empty table. Therefore scholars who know the secret made only on Shabbat nights 416 see that Hashem has given you the Shabbat. He asks what is Shabbat? He answers that is the day in which the other days rest and it is the inclusion of all the other six days and from it are they blessed. Rabbi Isa said the congregation of Israel is also called. Shabbat for she is the spouse of Shabbat and the bride as is written you shall keep the Shabbat therefore for it is holy to you Shema 3114 to you and not to the other nations this is what is meant by between me and the children of Israel of it 17 this portion is an eternal heritage of Israel thus it is written if you restrain your foot because of Shabbat Yeshua 5813 and we explain the matter where we discussed it 417 it is written let no man go out of his place on the seventh day we learn that its meaning is from the place that is proper to go meaning out of the city and the secret of the matter is blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place Yashis 312 which is Malchut and this is the place this is the secret of what is written for the place on which you stand is holy ground Shema 35 it is a known area that is called place which is known by the supernal glory namely Malchut 418 therefore it is an admonition to the person who adorns himself with the holy crown of above on the Shabbat day from his mouth secular talk should not emerge because if secular talk does emerge he desecrates the Shabbat day desecrating the Shabbat with the hands is done by doing work with his feet is by going out of the specified 2,000 cubits all these are a desecration of the Shabbat 419 let no man go out of his place this is the precious place of holiness because outside of it there are other Elohim blessed be the glory of Hashem is the glory of above namely Malchut from the chest and above from his place is the glory of below namely Malchut from the chest and below this is the secret of the crown of the Shabbat which is called place therefore a person should not go out from his place because outside of it are other Elohim blessed is the portion of one who has merited the splendors of the Shabbat section 30 the holy one blessed be he avenges the honor of the righteous the section tells of cases where the holy one blessed be he did not punish someone who blasphemed against him but punished them when they oppressed the children of Israel because the Holy One blessed be he cares more for the honor of the righteous than for his own honor. Rabbi Shia says that when Moses said they are almost ready to stone me God told him to go before the people he asked Moses if it was with their permission that Moses stood or with the permission of himself. 420 and Hashem said to Moses pass before the people. Shema 175 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying the angel of Hashem encamps round about those who fear him and he delivers them. Tehillim 348 blessed are the righteous for the Holy One blessed be he cares about their honor more than his own come and behold how many people in the world revile and blaspheme towards above like Sanchev who reviled and blasphemed saying which of all Elohim of the countries to Melashim 1835 and the Holy One blessed be he forgave and did not order to punish. Him as soon as he stretched out his hand against Chizkiah it is written that the angel of Hashem went out and smote in the camp of Ashur Assyria to Melashim 1935 421 Jeroboam the son of Nebat worshipped idols sacrificed to them and offered to them yet the Holy One blessed be he did not order to punish him but when he the prophet came and prophesied against him and Jeroboam stretched out his hand against him it is written and his hand dried up so that he could not draw it back to him I. Melashim 134 422 Pharaoh reviled and blasphemed and said who is Hashem Shemot 52 yet the Holy One blessed be he did not punish him until he refused to send out Israel as is written if as yet you do exalt yourself against my people Shemot 917 for if you refuse to let them go behold the hand of Hashem is upon the cattle of it 2 to 3 so the Holy One blessed be he always avenges the honor of the righteous more than his own 423 here Moses said they are almost ready to stone me Shemot. 174 The Holy One blessed be he said to him now is not the time to avenge your honor Moses rather pass before the people and we shall see who will stretch out his hand against you is it with their permission that you stand or with my permission section 31 the rock and the boulder Rabbi Shia talks about Moses rod that was turned into a snake in the verse the way of a snake upon a rock he says that the rock is Malchut and the rock is God rock always refers to Bura so that when God wants to punish Bura is aroused and punishes the flow of water in and you shall smite the rock and there shall come water out of it is the flow of Bura from the higher to the lower levels drawn by the holy name of God engraved on the rod Rabbi Abba says there is a supernal rock and a lower rock that emerges from it he tells us that wherever water is written it refers to the light of Jesus it is a sign and miracle of the Holy One blessed be he that the rock which is judgment should inspire the flowing forth of Shesedim. Rabbi Shimon turns to the scripture. He is the rock. His work is perfect, saying that the rock here is Abraham, who is Jesus. The sins of Israel weakened the rock from what it had been originally. 424. And your rod with which you smote the river, take in your hand and go. But five. What is the reason? Because it was engraved with miracles, and the supernal holy name was imprinted on it. At first, the rod was turned into a snake, which is the secret of Yezid of Zeir and of smallness. As we have learned, the way of a snake upon a rock. Mishlei 3019. The snake it is known arouses the rock, which is Malchut, in which area was the holy one blessed be he revealed. Here he became revealed, as is written. Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock. Shema 176. And who is the rock? It is as written. He is the rock. His work is perfect. Devarim 324, which is Malchut. Moses realized there how the snake stood by the stone, and we have. Already explained these matters 425 Rabbi Yehuda said if the Torah had remained silent and had not said more it would be good but rather it is written and you shall smite the rock and there shall come water out of it Shema 176 is this the custom of the holy name he said to him certainly it is so for there is no single name of all the holy names of the holy one blessed be he that does not perform miracles and mighty acts
Had known that the rock was going to become aroused against them to punish them they would have refrained from sinning against it but it was weak in their sight because they did not look at it and it did not observe their ways to punish them immediately and pertaining to this it is said of the rock that begot you you are unmindful 428 Rabbi Abba said there is a rock and there is a rock from the side of the supernal rock emerges a different rock and what is the supernal rock he is the rock. Of every rock and who is it it is she who bore the children of Israel's Eir and it is written of the rock that begot you you are unmindful meaning by the that gave birth to Israel because from the side of the supernal rock of above emerges another rock from the side of Ima which is by emerges Bureau which is Malchut 429 and this proceeds as Rabbi Lazar said it is written who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem Tehillim 1062 what are the mighty acts of Hashem it is to include the Supreme Ima of all which is Bina that even though she herself is not of judgment yet from her side is judgment prevalent because from her side there is Bureau which is Malchut that is sweetened in Bina and therefore it is called the supernal rock and have forgotten all that formed you to Aram 3218 is the light of Abba what is it it is supernal Chesed which is the light of Abba 430 Rabbi Abba also said wherever water I has written it is known to allude to the light of Chesed and the Holy One. Blessed be he becomes aroused by this rock which is judgment to cause water to flow which is Chesed because it is not proper for it to emerge unless it is from Chesed and this is the sign and miracle of the Holy One. Blessed be he that the rock which is judgment should inspire the flowing forth of Chesed. Um, David praised this and said who turned the rock into a pond of water. Tehillim 1148 and the meaning of turned is that he turned it from judgment to Chesed because it is not the customary way. A rock to pour forth Chesed 431 and regarding this through the supernal rock which is by he brought forth water from a lower place from Malchut and what is the name of that lower place boulder as is written and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock boulder. Bimid bar 208 and this boulder brought forth water as with the power of the supernal rock which is by 432. Rabbi Shimon said he is the rock his work is perfect. What is the meaning of he is the rock his work? Is perfect ITIS that the rock was turned and changed to do the work of the perfect one and who is he Abraham who is Jesus of whom it is written walk before me and be perfect there she 171 this is the meaning of who turned the rock into a pond of water that it changed from executing judgment to the ministering of Jesus this means that his work is perfect namely Jesus and this is Abraham who is Jesus 433 at this time the rock reverted to being perfect at another time when Moses wanted to draw water from this rock due to the sins of Israel it did not return to perfection as before at that moment Moses raged and said of the rock that begot you you are unmindful Devarim 3218 namely you weakened it from what it was before for because of you it is not perfect now and judgment was executed what was not so when it begot you meaning in the days of your youth section 32 is Hashem among us Rabbi Shimon explains that in the verses Hashem among us or not have I in the word not refers to the most concealed attic of all which is called I and not Israel were trying to discern between I and Zir Enpin because Israel tested God making a separation between Attic and Zir Enpin they were punished and came Amalek 434 Rabbi Abba said it is written is Hashem among us or not Shemot 177 was Israel fools who did not know this did they not see the Sheshanah before them and the clouds of glory that surrounded them that they said is Hashem among us or not these are people who saw the shine of the majesty of their king by the sea and we have learned that a maid servant saw at the sea what the prophet Ezekiel never saw it seems that they turned to be fools to say is Hashem among us or not have I in 435 he answers but this is what Rabbi Shimon said they wanted to discern between the most concealed attic of all which is Keter which is called I and not and Zir Enpin which is called Yod Hey hey therefore it is not written if Hashem is among us or no as is written whether they will follow my Torah or no Shema 164 but rather is Hashem among us or not have I in 436 he asks if so why were they punished he answers because they caused a separation between Attic and Zeir and Pen and they did it by testing as is written because they tempted also tested Hashem said Yisrael if the one is among us we will ask in one form and if that one then we will ask in another form therefore immediately then came Amalek Shema 178 section 33 then came Amalek Rabbi Yossi opens with blessed are you that sow beside all waters that let the feet of the ox and the ass range freely he says that the Holy One blessed be he has a treasure and pen that contains food for all we are reminded that Israel is the trunk and that the 70 branches are the ministers of the heathen nations when Israel encamped beside the water they dominated the waters that were under the branches. Of that tree the ox and ass in the opening verse are from the left and are brought into the discussion to emphasize that people must not give place to evil species must remain separated from them. Rabbi Yehuda says that Amalek was the first of the nations because he did not fear Elohim he is sentenced to everlasting perdition and his name shall be utterly blotted out from the remembrance of man. Rabbi Abba now talks about there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun. Rabbi Shimon explains that sore evil is a lack of charity wherein people cling to their money and even bear false witness in order to gain money. The Holy One blessed be he had given Israel everything yet they dealt with him with false charges and then came Amalek. The war of Amalek was a war above and a war below ultimately a war against God. Amalek came to provoke judgment over mercy during the war when Moses held up his hands he was fighting the battle above while Joshua was fighting the battle below. From that time until the redemption there will never be a greater battle Joshua was worthy of fighting against Amalek because Moses saw that he came from the level of Metatron Moses' hands were held up in faith and it was this that gained them assistance from above at the end Moses built an altar called Hashem is my banner Jacob built an altar and called it El the Elohim of the children of Israel 437 then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim Shema 178 Rabbi Yossi opened it. Discussion saying blessed are you that sow beside all waters that let the feet of the ox and the ass range freely Yeshua 3220 blessed are you that sow beside all waters there we learned that there are various types of waters that there are many kinds of lights meaning sweet waters of holiness bitter waters and proud waters happy is Israel who sow their seeds only beside the water in order to subdue all kinds of water of the other side as is written and they camp there by the water. Shemot 1527 meaning over those waters that were under the branches of the tree of the Holy One blessed be he which are the treacherous waters as is written before US 438 for we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he who is Bina has a tree and this tree is big and strong which is Zeir and, and it contains food for all and it is bordered with twelve borders meaning three columns to each of Chesed, Bure, Tiferet and Malchut which are in total twelve and it is strengthened by the four corners of the world that are Chesed, Bure, Tiferet and Malchut and seventy branches are attached to it who are the seventy ministers of the seventy nations and Israel are located in the trunk of this tree and the seventy branches are around them around Israel who are attached to the trunk of the tree 439 this is what is meant by and they came to Elim where were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees Shemot 1527 and we have already explained and learned the meaning of this in Many places what is the meaning of and they encamped there by the water at that time Israel dominated those waters that were under the branches of the tree that are called the proud water Tehillim 1245 and referring to this is written blessed are you that sow beside all waters namely in order to subdue all kinds of waters of the other side 440 that let the feet of the ox and the ass range freely these are two crowns of the left that the heathen peoples joined to which are called ox and an ass this is as is written and I have oxen and asses lit and ox and an ass spear she 326 Laban was an expert with sorcery and these lower crowns and he wanted to destroy Jacob with the ox and the ass as is written an Aramean wished to destroy my father Devarim 265 we have already learned that when Israel is meritorious they send them away so they cannot dominate them this is the meaning of that let let send away the feet of the ox and the ass range freely so that they Cannot dominate them. 441 Rabbi Abba said, When the spear is coupled together, the world is not able to tolerate it. And referring to this is written, You shall not plow with an ox and an ass together. Devarim 2210 The word together is precise, and we learned that a person should not give place to evil species because by the actions of a person things are aroused that should not be. And
Not many tongues, nations, and peoples in the world before Amalek came. 443 he answers when Israel left Egypt, the fear and terror of Israel fell upon all the nations of the world. This is what is meant by the people shall hear and be afraid, trembling shall take hold of the inhabitants of flesh. Shemot 1514 There was no nation that did not fear the superior might of the Holy One, blessed be he, but Amalek was not afraid as is written, and he feared not Elohim. Devarim 2518 He did not fear to approach you, therefore he is the first among the nations. 444 The first who came to wage war against Israel was Amalek, therefore his latter end shall be everlasting perdition, for it is written, I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Shemot 1714 And you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Devarim 2519 It is written, his latter end shall be everlasting perdition. Bimidbar 2420 He asks, should it not have been written, his everlasting perdition, and he answers, it means. Until the Holy One blessed be he comes and destroys him as is written I will utterly blot out Rabbi Lazar said come and behold even though he is the rock his work is perfect and he did kindness with them to bring forth water for them he did not forsake his own for it is written then came Amalek 445 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun Kahilat 512 there are many people who have clogged hearts because they are not occupied with Torah there is a sore evil he asks is there then an evil which is sore and an evil that is not sore and he answers certainly there is a sore evil for we learned that from the left side there emerge accusers who split the air 446 and when they want to go out they go and are swallowed in the hole of the great depth and afterwards they emerge joined together split ears and traverse through the world and they approach people and each one is called evil as is written no evil will befall you Tehillim 9110 which means they came with false charges against people 447 he asks a sore evil, why is it sore little he answers when it dwells on people it makes them misers with their money when the collector of charity comes to him it tries to prevent him from giving and says to him do not take out anything of yours when poor people come it tries to prevent him when he wants to eat of his money it tries to prevent him in order to guard the money for another and from the day that it dwells on the person he is ill like one who is bedridden because of his illness and does not eat or drink therefore it is an ill evil 448 and King Solomon cried out in his wisdom and said a man to whom Elohim has given riches wealth and honor Kahilat 62 the beginning and end of this passage are seemingly incoherent for it is written a man to whom Elohim has given riches if so what is the meaning of yet Elohim does not give him power to eat of it if so then it is not in the possession of the person and so Elohim has not given him anything 449 he answers if it had been written yet Elohim does not permit him to eat of it then I would say that he gave him nothing but it is written does not give him power because he believed in that evil and joined with it if so he himself caused this the holy one blessed be he did not give it dominion that the person should be born under its domination but rather he himself wanted it and held onto it 450 all his ways are like one who is better than because of his illness he does not eat or drink he does not go near his money or spend any of it and he guards it until he passes from the world and someone else comes and takes it for he is its true owner 451 and King Solomon cried and said riches kept for their owner to his early evil Kahila 512 who is its owner he is another one who inherited him and why did the other merit to become the owner of those riches it is because the first believed in this evil end Desired it and joined it, therefore the other who did not join this evil merited to become the owner of those riches. This is what is meant by to his evil, meaning because of his evil which he joined the other person profited. 452 Another explanation for there is an ill evil, it is he who dwells in a good part of his father's house but accuses his father with false charges. He cleaves unto this ill evil like a person who is bedridden because of his illness and all of his ways are false. Saying this I want and this I do not want and because of these riches this person has cleaved unto ill evil and is punished in this world and in the world to come. This is riches kept for their owner to his evil. 453 It is the same with Ismail the Holy One, blessed be he took them upon the wings of eagles and surrounded them with clouds of glory. The Shechinah went before them, brought down for them the manna to eat, brought forth for them sweet water, yet they dealt with him with false. Charges immediately then came Amalek 454 then came Amalek Rabbi Shimon said there is a secret of wisdom here because of the decree of severe judgment this war came and it took place both above and below and there is no word in the Torah that does not contain superior secrets of wisdom that are connected with the holy name is as if the holy one blessed be he said when Israel are righteous below my power becomes strengthened over all but when they are not righteous the superior power of above is weakened and the power of severe judgment gains strength 455 come and behold when Israel sinned below it is written then came Amalek and fought with Israel Shemot 178 he came to provoke judgment over mercy which is his way of war above because everything exists above and below in Rifidim means with weakened hands Hebrew fine Yadam as they weakened their hands from the Torah of the holy one blessed be he as we established Rabbi Yehuda said Amalek waged war twice against Israel one year and one as is written and the Amalek he came down and the Canaanite Bimidbar 1445 456 Rabbi Shimon said was the war with Amalek both above and below above was the provocation against the Holy One blessed be he as we learned below also it was all against the Holy One blessed be he for they took men and cut their foreskins of the Holy Sign and took them and threw them upwards and said take that which you desire in any case the entire war was against the Holy One blessed be he 457 and Moses said to Joshua choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek Shemot 179 he asks what did Moses foresee that he removed himself from this very first battle of the Holy One blessed be he answers blessed is Moses's portion for he noticed and saw and realized the root of the matter Moses said I will prepare myself for this battle which is above and you Joshua prepare yourself for the war below 458 this is what is written and it came to pass when Moses held up. His hand that Israel prevailed Shemot 1711 meaning Israel of above Zeir and therefore Moses removed himself from the battle below in order to expedite the battle above to be won through him 459 Rabbi Shimon said is this war of Amalek insignificant in your eyes come and behold from the day the world was created until that time and from that time until King Messiah will come and even in the days of Gog and Magog Armageddon there will not be anything comparable and not because they were so mighty and numerous but rather because it was in all the aspects of the Holy One blessed be he 460 and Moses said to Joshua he asked why to Joshua and no one else at that time he was only a youth as is written Joshua the son of Nun a young man Shemot 3311 and there were many among Israel who were stronger than he and he answers but Moses gazed with wisdom and knew what did he see he saw some male descending on the side above to assist Amalek below Moses said there seems to be a Difficult war here 461 Joshua at that time was situated in a very high level if you think he was situated in the Shechinah at that particular time it is not so because she was taken and joined to Moses so Joshua was joined below the Shechinah and where Rabbi Shimon said in that place that is called youth which is Metatron 462 this is what Rabbi Yehuda said of the verse your eyes shall see Jerusalem a quiet habitation a tent that shall not be taken down its picks shall never be removed forever Yeshua 3320 Jerusalem refers to the upper Jerusalem that is called a tent that shall not be taken down meaning that IT will no longer have to go into exile and this is the secret of Joshua the son of Nun a young man a young man indeed because he cleaved unto the supernal lad Metatron did not depart out of the tent Shema 3311 meaning from the one which is called a tent that shall not be taken down which is the Shechinah this teaches us that each and every day he was nurtured by the Shechinah just as the supernal youth did not depart out of the tent and nurtured from her constantly so did that youth below who was Joshua who did not depart out of the tent and nurtured from it constantly 463 therefore when Moses saw Samael descending to assist Amalek he said certainly this youth will stand up against him and will dominate over him to overcome him immediately and Moses said to Joshua choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek this battle below is yours and I will hasten for the battle above choose us out men namely righteous men the sons of righteous men that are worthy to go with you 464 Rabbi Shimon said at the moment that Joshua the youth went out the youth of above Metatron stirred and made many preparations with many weapons that his mother who is the Shechinah prepared for him for this war to avenge the vengeance of the
took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it a bit that is because Israel was in sorrow and he wanted to be together with them in their pain 466 and Aaron and she supported his hands the one on the one side and the other on the other side and his hands were heavy live faith a bit he asks what is the meaning of supported his hands faith is it that because Aaron and she supported his hands his hands were faith he answers whatever Moses did he did with wisdom Aaron and she. The one was from his own side which is the right and the other from his side which is the left and the hands of Moses were in the center in the central column therefore and his hands were faith faithful were Aaron in order to arouse from his side which is the right and she in order to arouse from his side which is the left and they held his hands from here and here in order that assistance would be available from above 467 and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand Israel. Prevailed when Moses held up means that he raised the right over the left and he was intent upon this when he raised his hands then Israel prevailed Israel of above which is Zeir and, and when he let down his hand Amalek prevailed meaning when Israel below ceased to pray the hands of Moses could not stand up and remain straight and Amalek prevailed from here we learn that even though the priest spreads his hands during the offering in order to perfect himself in everything Israel must be present with him during his prayers 468 we have learned that in this war of Amalek were present both those of above and those of below therefore and his hands were lit was faith meaning proper faith he asks and his hands was faith it should have said where he answers this is because everything depends upon the right hand therefore was is written and his hands is written to teach that the right is the most important of all it is written your right hand Hashem is glorious. In power your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces Shemot 156 469 and Hashem said to Moses write this for a memorial in a book Shemot 1714 come and behold it is written above and Joshua harried Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword he asked harried Hebyashalash should have been written so he answers but Yashalash is as we learned that did rule had Kolsh over the nations Yeshua 1412 Joshua ruled over them and a sword that shall avenge the covenant. Slow them is written by the edge of the sword as we learn 470 write this heads off for a memorial Zod is precise which is a name of Malchut and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua because he is destined to slay other kings namely 31 kings that I will utterly blot out lit I will blot a blotting blotting refers to above I will blot refers to below the memory means the memory above and the memory below 471 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written I will utterly blot out which indicates that the Holy One blessed be he will blot out and you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek Devarim 2519 which indicates that we are obligated to erase remembrance of him he answers but the Holy One blessed be he said you will blot out the memory of Amalek of below and I shall blot out the memory of Amalek of above 472 Rabbi Yossi said other allied nations accompanied Amalek they were all afraid to approach Israel except it Amalek therefore Joshua ruled over them Rabbi Yisa said and Joshua harried for he broke their power from above 473 and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Hashem is my banner Shemot 1715 and Moses built an altar corresponding to the supernal altar and called the name of it of that particular altar of above Hashem is my banner because it avenged the holy sign of Israel and since that time it was commonly called a sword that shall avenge the covenant and Moses called it Hashem is my banner 474 Rabbi Yossi said and Moses built an altar namely an altar to atone for Israel and called the name of it the name of what Rabbi Shia said the name of that altar Hashem is my banner had as is written and there he tested them had who which refers to elevation it all pertains to the same issue for Israel was elevated because he was uncovered and the sign of that covenant was revealed by them the holy sign from here we learned that once a person's son is circumcised and the sign of the holy covenant is revealed by him and that son is called an altar to atone upon it and what is its name Hashem is my banner 475 similar to this Jacob built an altar as is written and he erected there an altar and called it El Elohim of Israel Bereshit 3320 whom did he call that place which is called altar namely Malchut and what is its name El Elohim of Israel section 34 and they saw the Elohim of Israel this section proscribes looking at the rainbow above the Shechina and the rainbow below the sign of the covenant that is imprinted on a person Rabbi Shia talks about the sapphire stone in and there was under his feet a kind of paved work of sapphire stone saying that it means the transparent light of the sapphire the engravings of above that flash and illuminate the borders in the great tree illuminate the Shechina when she joins with Zer and all these lights and paths illuminate upon the light of the Shechina 476 Rabbi Yusi said what is the meaning of the verse and they saw the Elohim of Israel Shema 2410 he asks who can possibly see the Holy One blessed be he is it not written for no man shall see me and live Shema 3320 yet here it says and they saw he answers rather the rainbow was revealed to them in illuminating colors which is the Shechina that receives from the three colors white red and yellow and so have we learned that whoever gazes upon the rainbow is as though he gazes upon the Shechina and it is prohibited to gaze upon the Shechina 477 therefore it is prohibited for a person to gaze upon the fingers of the priests when they stretch out their hands it is prohibited to gaze upon the rainbow he asks what rainbow Rabbi Abba said any rainbow he said to him what is any rainbow he said to him both the rainbow above and also the rainbow below 478 he explains his words upon the rainbow above that it is prohibited to gaze upon means upon its colors white red and green which are the secret of the three columns that illuminate in the Shechina for anyone who gazes upon its colors is as though he gazes upon the high supernal place it is prohibited to gaze at it since this is a disgraceful manner towards the Shechina what is the rainbow of below it is that sign of that covenant that is imprinted in the person for anyone who gazes upon it conducts himself disgracefully against the above 479 Rabbi Yitzhak said yet does it not say put I pray you your hand under my thigh bear she 242 that he made him swear by the sign he said to him leave alone the fathers of the world for they are not like the other people of the world moreover it is written put I pray you your hand under my thigh but not look under my thigh therefore it is prohibited to gaze upon the rainbow in general as we learn 480 we learned and they saw the Elohim of Israel Shema 2410 as the rainbow was revealed to them in beautiful colors illuminating flashing on all sides which is the Shechina this is understood from the words the Elohim of Israel instead of and they saw Elohim of Israel as the Shechina is called E.T. the Rabbi Yossi said this is the light of the luminary of the Shechina who is it? it is the one called youth meaning Metatron who serves the Shechina in the temple therefore E.T. is precise because it is the name of the Shechina that includes Metatron her servant 481 and there was under his feet a kind of paved work of sapphire stone of a stone was marked there under his place one of the stones that were used to build in Egypt for we have learned that there was one woman who gave birth in Egypt and the officers of Pharaoh came to cast him into the river and she put him into the place of a stone of the building and the palm of a hand came and grasped it and it was marked under the feet of the Shechina and it remained in his presence until the terrestrial temple was burned down as it is written and remembered not his footstool Egypt 21 that was that sapphire stone 482 Rabbi Shia said the sapphire stone means the transparent light of the sapphire the keys of the spice wine the superb engravings of above that flash to 72 directions this is what is meant by and lay your foundations with sapphires Yeshua 5411 the very heaven Shema 2410 what is the very heaven Rabbi Abba said the very heaven which is Zeir and is engraved with 72 branches blossoming to every direction meaning the name of I bet 72 that illuminates both in Chakma and Chesedim here also the appearance of that very heaven was exactly like the appearance of heaven itself which is Zeir and Rabbi Yehuda said it is all imprinted with that light of the vision that is engraved from the aspect of the Shechina 483 Rabbi Shishkiah said behold there are 60 that's around the Shechina as is written 60 valiant men are round about it Sher Hashirim 37 he said to him it is certainly so but these 60 illuminated from the 12 boundaries that are in Zeir and, and were never removed from around the Shechina for we have learned the 12 superbly engraved borders ascended balanced equally in the great and strong tree they are the secret of the three columns that illuminate in the four directions Jesus Bure Tiferet and Malchud which add up to 12 and they illuminate the queen who is the Shechina when she
Erected an altar, Rabbi Yehuda concludes Bishalish by saying that there is no generation that does not contain the evil seed of Amalek, the Holy One. Blessed be he wages war against them, and the sinner's sins will be consumed out of the earth, meaning in this world and in the world to come. About that same time it is written, Bless you, Hashem, all my soul, Hail you, Yah, 485. We have learned, and Moses erected an altar, Shemot 1715, as we have explained, and he called the name of it, Hashem is my banner. Or miracle as the miracle is ascribed to Hashem, Hashem is my banner, indeed, why? Because Amalek took all those who were circumcised but not uncovered and cut them and threw them up and said, Take what you wanted at that moment, it is written, for he said, Because Yah has sworn by his throne that Hashem will have war with Amalek from generation had to generation had Dora, but 16 the words Midr and Dora are spelled without the Bob to teach us that those generations in which there were battles against Amalek lacked inhabitants above for the name was not complete nor was the throne complete and they were lacking inhabitants below for there is no completeness for the lower beings 486 Rabbi Yehuda said in every single generation and in all the subsequent generations to come into the world there is no generation that does not contain that evil seed of Amalek the Holy One blessed be he wages war against them about them it is written the sinner's sins will be consumed out of the earth Talim 10435 out of the earth meaning in this world and in the world to come about that same time is written bless you Hashem all my soul hail you Yahweh.